it feels like it's been so long, but it hasn't. I mean, for us, it feels like it's been so long. For people watching at home, hopefully, it didn't feel like anything. Yeah, at all. it felt like normalcy. Hope so. Yeah, guys, it's the Wolf Den podcast. You know it. You do love you it. love it? Do you? You do. You do. You do act I? like you don't, but you do. Yeah, I got more headroom than normal. Uh, well, slot that's time. just how it's gonna be today. I'm, I'm not judging. <laughs> I'm just noticing. Uh, welcome back, everybody. It's our we're, we uh, did a pre-recorded one last week. Yes, and I think it went fine. Yes, uh, but now we're live. How do you know we're live? Penis. <laughs> you can't bleep it. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh, I'm doing just fine. How are you, Will? I'm doing okay. I feel like I'm getting a little cold in the back of my throat, which I oh, don't appreciate. Good. But we'll see where this takes me. Everyone's getting sick right now. Yeah, it's fun. Thanks, Biden. <laughs> <laughs> He's the reason. I hung out with dad yesterday. <laughs> oh, that explains yeah. a lot. Uh, hey, my wash cycle's complete. Okay. Um, got a bunch of notif- Oh, we got a lot of things to talk about today. Yeah, uh, uh, Summer, Summer Games, Games Fest. Fest. Yeah, That was over the weekend. The better E3, maybe. I don't know. It was good, though. I enjoyed You know, it got a lot of crap. Yeah. Uh, there were some fine announcements. I, it, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't like anything blockbuster. No, but, but there's been some bad E3s too. Yeah. So I would say like they each of the major so- showcases, which we'll get to the main Summer Games Fest, uh, the Xbox showcase, and the Ubisoft one. Each one had something I was looking forward to, or was at least interested in. Okay. You know, which can't say for a lot of these things. Yeah. I looked. I didn't watch any of the events. I, I looked yeah. through some of the trailers after the fact and uh, found a couple things here and there that I was interested in. But for the most part, I, I'm, I'm I'm whelmed. Yeah, I was. You know, I was mostly. If I was watching, it was while cooking dinner or washing dishes yeah. or the Xbox one. I was just following on Twitter and stuff. Well, we're gonna go but, through everything. Yes. And hopefully, I'll find some things that I'm interested yes. in. Here. I do have a lot to say about some of the stuff that. Mm-hmm. Um. So we got some notifications here. Eric says Slumber Games Fest. Am I right? Ooh, that's a good one. I also have to train myself to say Summer Game Fest. Yeah. Why is it singular? I know there's a reason, but I remember it being a dumb reason, so I forgot it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, we got Wizard of the Coin with six months underscore with 76 months. Could you imagine damn, being damn. that old? Gutter is a tool. Thanks for 23 Lord Noraj with the five months. Hey there, live again. Now I get to find my place again when I finish the second half tomorrow. That felt like a song. Yeah. And don't know the song, but there you go. There you go. Uh, William, Will Wolf, damn it, with the 50 months. Gotta say, not that many months. I Look, man, there must have been a break here and there. <laughs> hey, Wolf Bros. Summer Game Fest? More like Summer Lame Fest, am I right? Who's this guy? Yves Gilmo. E- no. <laughs> I mean, who's this guy right uh, Yves Gilmo, you say it. Gilmo. Wasn't pelted with tomatoes during the Ubisoft event. Microsoft made Jonah Joanna Dark less hot than she was in the N64, and Jeff Keighley didn't make out with Kojima on stage. I mean, what even is the point? Like, there's so much tension there. You would think he would invite Kojima on stage for, like, five seconds and just, like, go hog wild on each other. Summer Game Fest, more like woke Game Fest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. DJ Skeletor, thanks for the five gifted subs. And Mega Red, thanks for the five months. Thoughts on WWDC? We don't have anything about that. No, I didn't think there was anything. There's a game mode. You know, I watched the recap of it, and it, like it would say like game mode, but none of the recaps would explain to me what game mode was. Like, I think it just ramps up the processor. That's it. Oh, wig woo. Wig woo. Big woo. That doesn't need a whole mode. Well, other handhelds right now do like performance modes where yeah. they ramp up the amount of power consumption. So mm-hmm. I'd imagine that this does the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Well. It'll, it'll make games run better. All right. This could be the key to getting something similar to JIT on the, right. new, the new iPhone. I did see that there was a list of games coming to Mac, including like Resident Evil 2, uh, Control, uh, a couple of other like big ones. Games I already own on Steam, yeah. but I've not yet seen it clarified if that was coming to Steam or just the Mac App Store. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I'd imagine 
Mac App Store, maybe Steam. Because right now I know Resident Evil Village is on the Mac App Store, but it's not on Steam for Mac. Yeah, because they have. It sounds like they have a deal with, right. with Apple, and that okay. pisses me off. Yeah, I most of my stuff's on Steam. I would love for Steam to just work on my Mac and yeah. my iPhone. And I mean, stuff. Steam does work on your Mac. It's just the games have to also work on your Mac. Yeah. Uh, Eric, thanks for the seventy-one months. Uh oh. Original Spiff says, referring to the game mode. It creates a lower latency connection on the controller and headphones and prioritizes the game performance. Okay. So I guess it's more akin to like game mode on a TV. You don't realize it's doing something, but it's actually doing something. Yeah. Why isn't it? Well, we'll we'll see when we get our hands on it for real. Uh, Warheart, thanks for gifting us up. Uh, All right. Let's get right into... Oh, no, but first we must talk about... Oh, yeah. Some free games you can play with your Nintendo Switch Online. Yes. Uh, over the weekend, Nintendo announced they were adding five games to Switch Online. Uh, you are getting the Mega Man uh, Quintology. Five of them. The five Mega Man Game Boy games. Pen, are... pe- wouldn't that be Pen? 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 Pentology. Pentology. They hit the Pentagon! Yeah. <laughs> The five Mega Man games Mega released Man. for the original GB uh, Game Boy Color. No, just Game Boy. Just Game Boy. The original Dot Game, Game Boy. They're all here. Uh, Mega Man, Wily's Revenge, uh, Mega Man 2, 3, 4, and 5. So, uh, I, I think... So, the first one's Japan only, but... No. I thought it was Japan no, only. No, all these came out internationally. I think... Uh, f- I don't think any of them were Japan only. I thought the first one was Japan only. No. Dr. Wily's Revenge? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's got a regular release, regular international release. It was called Rockman World in Japan. Yeah, I think they were all called like Rockman World something because yes. I don't think they're they're not ports of the NES games. They're like remixes of the NES games, if that makes sense. Yeah, they are. Like they they have the same sprites. They have like the same like design and layout. But, like, they're not a direct one-to-one port. So, I'm looking it up right now. Uh, the first Mega Man is a remake of Mega Man 1 and 2. Yeah. Second one is 2 and 3. The third one is 3 and 4. The fourth one is 4 and 5. And the fifth one is just a new game. Okay. And there is also currently a, f- a-, a fan initiative to remake Mega Man 5 in... The style of Mega Man 7, I think. Okay, I guess the SNES. Yeah, uh, uh, because people really like Mega Man 5. So yeah. I I didn't know it was its own game. I thought it was just Mega Man 5 for the Game Boy, but no, apparently yeah. it's its own thing. So I started playing it. It's yeah. very good. Okay. It's still You're playing on a Game Boy, so right. it is pretty hard. Uh, mm-hmm. Mega These old Mega Man games are already really hard. Yeah. Uh, it's also like... You know how all the Mega Man games have like a boss order that would be like the easiest way to beat it? Like you yeah. beat this boss first, take his weapon, and mm-hmm. beat this boss with that weapon. Uh, this one makes it a little more complicated. There's like a... Yeah. I, I downloaded like a little chart that I had to <laughs> use. Um, but it's good. It's, again, really hard. But uh, it's a fun little thing. I was playing it uh-huh. on my uh, RG35XXSP instead of on right. Nintendo Switch Online. But you could just play it on Nintendo Switch Online... Yes. Uh, with your uh, Nintendo Switch. It's interesting that they are they threw them up on Switch Online because the regular Mega Man games have their own collections. So I guess Capcom didn't want to <laughs> do that for these games. And they're like, Nintendo, you want them? And Nintendo's like, yeah. <laughs> it's interesting because it's Capcom. Yeah. They could have just made their it's own collection. It's a third party thing. It's great that these are available at all. Yeah. And you're right. They could have made their own collection because they're... Uh, Mega Man collections sell a shit ton. Yeah. They've all done really good. So they could have made money there. But I think this is a this is this is a big deal. I think more people would give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, if, I think if, absolutely. If it comes yeah. to Nintendo Switch Online. This gives me some hope for some uh Sonic Advance games. Why yeah. not? Why don't we have those? Yeah. There's no reason not to. Mm. I mean, but put those on Nintendo Switch Online. Yeah. That would be a great place for them. I wouldn't mind that at all. Uh, so give it a shot. It's a good game. Mm-hmm. You should try some of these. Uh, the first two, I have the first two. They're they're okay. There's also um, they're right. 
when they went on uh, Game Boy Color, there's uh, the Mega Man Extreme series, which is like the Mega Man X equivalent of. Yeah. But those are still 8 bit sprites instead of like the 16 bit yeah sprites. it's not as good as just regular Mega Man x but yeah. it is interesting to see how they did like some weird sort of like uh mm -hmm. it's like he's dreaming yeah it's like he's having a recap of of the events of Mega Man x mm -hmm. anyway uh so go give those a try uh you might have some fun uh all right we'll just go pentology uh, by the way it's uh for five pentology yeah okay uh hey Mr. Game and Tech, thanks for the five months. And Willa Davis, thanks for the 100 bits. Hope you guys had a fun summer games fest. How was the Shadow of the Bird it, Tree yeah. preview event? Good to see you on the giant bomb <laughs> couch. I don't know what the fuck you talking the, about. That's the Elden Ring DLC, isn't it? Yeah, Elden Ring Shadow of the um, Urn Tree. Oh, that sounds like some nerd shit. Yeah, and also Giant Bomb is too scared to have us on their couch. <laughs> Just, just saying, they're cowards is what they are, and didn't bite us on the couch. Is there a guy that looked like me on the couch? Yeah, probably. Every, everybody that? looks like you were a fat bird. You know? <laughs> Every skinny white guy with long hair. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Summer Games Fest. Yes. We'll do the regular Summer Game. This is the regular Summer Games yeah, Fest. Yeah, I mean, because that was the thing, first right? one, okay. and then, then, then the Xbox Showcase. I like then... this article, Yeah, because it just just shows you. Yeah. It shows you everything. Uh, While you read through this, I'm going to try to fix some cameras. Okay. Well, started off with, um, right at the gate, Lego Horizon Adventures. Um, this is literally just a Lego version of the Horizon games, the, the PlayStation exclusive games. Uh, but what's interesting is not only is this the Legofied version of it, uh, it's coming to PlayStation 5 and PC and Switch at launch. This is like a weird offshoot of like Sony's previous plans of like, yeah, we'll put the games on PC like two years down the road. Uh, this is day and date on not only the PC, but a competitor as well. I guess that's okay because it's like a side story or like a family friendly spinoff to Horizon, not like actual Horizon, but that's cool. Uh, do you want to give your two cents in while you're fixing cameras? Yeah. All right, because I I saw you were excited for this. That's really cool that they're yeah. that they're uh, making it uh, that 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 Sony of all is, people of all people yeah. is putting a game on Switch. Mm -hmm. Now people, uh, I tweeted about this and people were pointing out MLB. Right, that wasn't really their call. Yeah, if Sony had their way, they would have never done this. This mm -hmm. is an IP that is owned by Sony. Yeah. They yeah. could have very easily said, like, the Lego version has to stay on. Because, like, I think the... I don't even know if it came out. There was supposed to be, like, a Funko Gears of War game. And I think that was only on Xbox. Yeah. Yeah, you're not going to see that everywhere else. Well, that's Xbox. Like, Microsoft is, is now... They've proven they don't care. They'll yeah. put whatever they want anywhere. Interestingly, this is not coming to Xbox. No. Yeah. They, they still... I think this was Lego being like, hey, we want this thing on Switch. And yeah. Sony was like, fine. Because, I mean, honestly, like... Lego probably sells most of their games on Switch. Yeah, yeah, that's, it, it's a great place for this. Yeah, uh, but I'd imagine Sony uh, is down because they got to see the appeal, you know. Yeah, S Switch. I think also too, like they see the writing on the wall that like console exclusives are not the same as they were like a decade ago. Yeah, yeah, they may help push the number on the system on system sold, but that's still not enough to keep the business afloat. Yeah, and there's a different audience on Switch. It's yeah. younger, and this is for younger audiences. And, mm -hmm. and it's a way to get those younger audiences interested in an IP like Horizon. Yeah. So I just think it makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope that we get that with more stuff. And, but not necessarily Lego. I don't care yeah. about Lego. I mean, I'm, like, not, I'm not interested in this game at maybe all. Maybe <laughs> we could see like the Jack and Daxter collection or like the Sly Cooper collection on Switch and yeah. things like that. You know, like these days, Sony doesn't really have a lot of like younger skewing ip maybe spider-man but like god of war is rated m last of us is rated m uh, horizon even is rated t you know that they had to lego fight it to put it on switch so like maybe we'll see like some of their older stuff the more like you know all ages stuff like jack and dax or like uh sly cooper and stuff yeah come to other systems i mean they already see the appeal of branching out into pc so why yeah. not branch out into switch for uh the younger audience yeah uh all right so i'm glad that's happening I'm not going to play that game. Yeah. Wolf Den Dad in the chat says, you should skip the summer games 
and do something. Like, go outside and see what the sun looks like. Uh, Dad, that's what we grew up. This is what we grew up with. Yeah. For context, our mother used to throw us out of the house and lock the door so we would play outside. Uh, And we would just try to find ways to break in. We got really good at breaking into our own house. Dad, if you're still watching this before you sign off to do whatever it is boomers do at this time of night, the phrase is touch grass. (laughs) So next time you want to, like, you know, talk down to to the younger generation you, you tell them to go outside and touch grass that's yeah, that's yeah. the go, phrase go touch grass go touch grass which i still haven't done which today. i had which i did the other day when i mowed the lawn <laughs> like you, <laughs> you taught me to grass. yeah uh garrison thank you for the prime hey bros any thoughts on the steam controller <sighs> no it looked it always looked dumb like it never looked comfortable I but I do regret not buying it when Steam was liquidating it because it was only five dollars, oh, and I would have loved to just like cool, had yeah. it as like a music because I have the Stadia controller. Stadia as, like, controller is pretty cool. It is, but like I don't know if I'm ever going to use it. It's just a museum piece now. Yeah, uh, I would like to have tried the Steam controller, but it's there's a reason why it it hasn't. There's a reason why they stopped making it. Yeah. Like it's it's a dumb idea. Uh, Wolf then dad says kiss my grass Uh, Again it's funny Because it sounds like ass Next is Quidditch (laughs) Uh, Who cares We're getting a Quidditch game Uh, This is the second Quidditch game There was one on the GameCube PS2 And original Xbox back in the day But this is a new Quidditch game For all you Harry Potter fans That are still out there Like look I'm not going to lie Quidditch looks kind of fun. <laughs> I'm really? Not, I'm not going to get this game. The real game? The like, real, really playing Quidditch or like, this game? In the movie. Like the movies. Like watching it in the movies. Like seeing like the whole context of it. Like mm-hmm. it looks kind of cool. It looks kind of fun. Maybe the game will be too. Probably not going to get the game. But, you know, if, if there was a demo for it, I would give it a shot. <laughs> you know? Uh, I want nothing to do with it. Next right. is Cuff Bust. What the hell is this? Don't remember this one. All right, we're just going to skip over yeah, a there, lot of these. We any, plow I feel like if these. there are any that like we have things to say on, yeah. we'll stop and we'll talk about it at length. Civilization 7. Uh, uh, this was a this is a big deal. Everybody loves Civilization. We're getting a new one. Uh, Sid Meier, the creator of it, uh, introduced the game. And that was cool. Oh, that's uh, cool. That's, he's one of the few people who like deserve to have their name like in the title of the game. Okay. You know? So uh, No gameplay or anything? No. Just him saying like we're making it. Uh, fighting game fans having a good time because now you could play as freaking uh, Terry in Street Fighter. Terry and uh, Mai from uh, the Fatal Fury games mm-hmm. are now in uh, Street Fighter. Uh, and Bison's back. We haven't actually seen what he looks like in Street Fighter. This is just like a little animated. Uh, I'm sh- uh, I'm assuming he's going to look like that because like Bison well, looks like he does in the thumbnail. Right. But it's a cartoon. Like I want to see what he right. looks like in the game. I think there is gameplay of Bison. There is a CG thing of yeah. Bison. I don't know if it's okay. him necessarily playing a game. Yeah. Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. Uh, now, I there's a lot of Dragon Ball games. Which one is Sparking Zero? <laughs> See, I, this is confusing me because, like, 90% of Dragon Ball games are fighting games. Yeah. And I thought that after Fighter Z came out, like, we were done. We had the ultimate Dragon Ball fighting game. No, there's no, 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 no need no. for because, anymore. Because I think that's of a certain series. And then there's also this. So this, it says, the Dragon Ball Budokai Tenkaichi series returns with Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. I noticed <laughs> that that title does not say Budokai or Tenkaichi in it. <laughs> it's also confusing because Budokai Tenkaichi is a different series from regular Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Right. So, I isn't the Budokai Tenkaichi... It's the weird one where it's like, it's not a side-on view, it's an over-the-shoulder so, view. So, yeah, this is like a 3D fighting game, whereas Z is a is a side-scrolling fighting yeah. game. Uh, I have to be careful not to say 2D, or else we're going to start the, the wars that we used to have. But, but no, 2D fighter mm-hmm. just means that, like... You fight on a on a literal 2D plane. Sure. But like a 3D fighter, like Street Fighter is a 2D fighter. You just have sure. up and down and left and right. right. Whereas Tekken is a 3D fighter where you have like the full 360 uh-huh. degree range of the ring. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> the high flying fighting game comes to PS5, PC, Series X. No Switch. Sorry. Yeah, probably not. Uh, Fatal Fury, City of the Wolves. Uh, we are not in that game. No. Uh, Monster Hunter Wilds uh, was shown off 
at Summer Games Fest. Um, what was the last Monster Hunter game? I don't know, man. Monster Hunter, wasn't it wild? I, there's like a thousand Monster Hunter games. World. Monster Hunter World is what oh, it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm I am abstaining from this because I played World and I didn't like it, but I kept playing it. Yeah. So I'm gonna tell myself I'm not gonna. It's like smoking cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna like it. Yeah. Uh, metaphor Refantasio. I nailed it. Uh, six games from Blumhouse, the the horror movie studio, is now making games. Uh, oh, I'm, 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 I'm behind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, six games? Six games. Uh, Crystal Theater of Idols, um, Grave Sessions, Grave Seasons, Sleep Awake, uh, Fear the Spotlight, The Simulation, and Project C. These are all from different developers under the Blumhouse Games Publishing. They don't look like horror games. Well, there's some horror games. But yeah, they're, not, um, they're not all horror games. They're not? They all look. I, I just assume they're all horror games because that's exactly what Blumhouse does. <laughs> uh, wait, yeah. What's what's? Oh, uh, okay. This one has like horror stuff, but also it's like fucking Stardew Valley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I was I was uh confused. For yeah. Some. All right. Uh, Alan Wake Two. We're getting uh, Night Springs uh, DLC. DLC. Uh, also announced. This looked nothing like Alan Wake to me when I, I know saw it. this. I think this Night Springs is um. No, Night Springs isn't the TV show that's in Alan Wake, but this is based on like that Twilight Zone. No, it is Night Springs. The, there's a TV show in the Alan Wake universe that's basically Twilight Zone, and I think this is like an extension of that. Mm -hmm. So you, you you play as like other characters. Yes. I, I, the reason it didn't look like Alan Wake is because you're playing as this like a uh, uh, waitress, and she's talking to Alan Wake. Yes. It like it like freaked me out for a second. Well, like. As you know, Alan Wake. This, still, this, I saw this screenshot and I was like, "Yeah, it didn't still look haven't played like the Alan second Wake. one." But my knowledge of the first one was it was just very bizarre and metatextual in a lot of ways. And most of like the Remedy made games are like that. So like this is just another, another, another chapter in that legacy right mm -hmm. there. Uh, not in this article, but also announced um, at the same time. Sam Lake came out and said that uh, Alan Wake Two. Originally, a digital-only game would now be available physically uh, for pre-order, and that's a big deal. Yeah. It's expensive. Just the regular version, I think, is like $80. That's really weird. Yeah. So Why would they do that? I remember when they... I think my theory is when they announced Alan Wake 2 originally as a digital-only game, it was still expensive. It was still mm -hmm. full price. But they said that they went digital-only because in order to make any sort of a profit on it... They had to like maximize distribution and like spending money on printing discs wasn't was not feasible for them at the time. Now that the game is a success and they have a partner, they can like actually actually make it feasible. I would love to know the actual cost of the discs yeah. for like a big AAA game because yeah. I don't think it's a lot at all. I think it's extremely low. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right. The next game is Phantom Blade Zero. This game looks awesome. Yeah, we've seen this game before, though, so this isn't really anything. Exciting. Yes, and we've seen another Phantom Blade games. Oh, I didn't know this is part of a series. I think it is. The, the name at least sounds familiar. I just remember this game. This game yeah. was in a uh, PlayStation Showcase. <clears throat> right. Uh, next up, we got Slitterhead, a new horror game from X Silent Hill and Siren developers. So that could be your Silent Hill cure if you're not excited for the remake. Uh, Dune Awakening, a survival MMO, uh, in a brand new story heavy trailer, um, is set in a universe without Paul Atreides. Survival MMO. Okay. So it's, it's not like the old Dune games. No, okay. it's, it's an MMO. Yeah. So, okay. It's, you know, survival basically means like, you know, crafting and collectibles and whatnot. All right. But in Dune without... Paul Atreides, we'll, who is Mr. Dune. We'll see how that goes. Yeah. Uh, back to Slitterhead, though. Uh, yeah. Wood was excited for that. Yeah? Uh, you, like, use your blood in the game to make weapons or something. That's kind which, of fun. That, there's an anime, Blood Blockade Battlefront. From the Trigun creator, right? From the Trigun yeah. guy. And that's the concept of that, is that they use their blood to make their weapons The character in Mortal Kombat, Scarlet, that's her gimmick. She can make weapons out of her blood. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Uh, next, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Rita's Rewind. This looks sick. It's a side-scrolling uh, beat 'em up set in the Power Rangers universe. The original, it's the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers lineup. So it's right up our alley. Um, 
I hot take um, mm. Shredder's Revenge, while great, set off a bad trend of just every, any retro game uh, from the 90s, any retro property from the 90s that's getting rebooted now apparently has to be a pixel art side scroll and beat them up. That that game, this game, uh, Toxic Crusaders, G.I. Joe Wrath of Cobra, that seems to be the path. Like, fucking do something different. <laughs> you well, know, the last good Power Rangers game was a Sega Genesis side scroll and beat em up. <laughs> True. So. I'm not opposed to this. No. Same thing with with uh, uh, turtles. Yeah. Like I understand why they would want to do that. But like, I don't know. When Biker Mice from Mars inevitably comes back, (laughs) I don't know, make it a road rash clone. So, yeah, no, you could do a lot more with yeah. it, but you know, this looks interesting. Also, yeah, no, I'm, I'm probably gonna play this game. Like, let's be real here. Now, is this made by anybody we should know about? Uh, Digital, Digital Eclipse. Eclipse. I don't know. What yes, do. uh, I know the name, and I know they've done stuff. I just know that the guy who made uh, Berserk Boy Zoo, yeah, name, he uh did some of the animations for this. Mm-hmm. So that's why it looks. good. Uh, Digital Eclipse made... Oh, they're the guys who do... They did the Cowabunga collection. Okay. Uh, They did um, the Atari 50th uh, collection, the making of uh, uh, Karatika. They're mostly been doing like um, retro game collections. So they did the Mega Man Legacy collection. Oh, interesting. So them doing like an original title uh, is pretty interesting. Okay. Uh yeah, Disney classic games, Space Jam, a new yeah. legacy. Oh, that's the that's a new game. <laughs> yeah. I mean can ignore that one. <laughs> All right. Um next don't oh, know this game. Uh Kyron, sure. Um Wander Stop. Oh, is this the one from yes, from the creator of the Stanley Parable? This was that weird one where it was like looked like a cozy game, but then all of a sudden the protagonist had like a dark secret she was trying to hide. Yeah, I don't all I know about this game is, first of all, there's a coffee cup in the in in, in the logo, so yeah. everybody's like, "You gotta play this game." I don't think there's anything. Oh, there's coffee. She's yeah. making coffee. There you go. The only other thing I saw was Doctor Disrespect reacting to a woke game, and it was <laughs> this game, and he didn't even say anything. Mm-hmm. And there's no, and I don't know what's woke about it still. Well. I'll tell you right now, it's not coffee, it's tea. So there's there's number Fuck. one right I there. I hate this game. <laughs> you manage a tea shop within a magical forest and tend to customers who pass through. But like watching the trailer, like you see all that shit, and it looks like very much cozy game stuff, which fine, whatever, not my Is that cup what's, of tea. Are cozy games just I, inherently woke? I guess. I don't know. My idea of a cozy game is like the Hitman games, because like that is like those are really like relaxing to me. But like yeah. right right around here in the trailer, she's like starting to have like non flashbacks and shit. So like that like actually has me interested. Like maybe there's more to this game than just oh making tea for like whimsical forest creatures. Yeah, I'm very confused because this is yeah. the Stanley Parable guy. Yeah, and this does not seem like a Stanley Parable type game. Yeah. Um. So there's that. Uh. Sonic X Shadow Generations. We got some more gameplay footage and a date October 25th. I'm still confused. So is very this, much is is this a remake of Sonic Generations with Sa- Shadow or is this a new game? Uh, I think. It is, it's a, I think it's a remake of Sonic Generations with Shadow DLC stapled in. Even though there was no DLC for the original Sonic Generations. Yeah, I mean, honest, didn't play much Sonic Generations. I, I only played a couple, like the, a couple of worlds. I mean, I love Sonic Generations. I beat it several times. It's one of my favorite Sonic games. Uh, I don't know what, like the only negative I could say about Sonic Generations is that it was very short. It could have used DLC, like well, more levels from like uh, other Sonic games. But like not this. <laughs> like I like, don't know why we need this. Are the levels being shown here levels that are in the first Sonic Sonic Generations? That's my question. So yes, except the shadow levels. Those okay. are all new. That's all new stuff. Okay, I'm so, gonna play this. Yeah, I, I gonna, feel like I might like. Because again, I didn't play too. much of the original Sonic yeah. Generation. All right. Uh, Valorant is coming to consoles. Maybe I'll actually play Valorant. <laughs> so this is cool. I can't imagine this being any good on console because it really does require you to. Aim with a mouse. The, the game is all about aiming. They've they've got to find a way. I'm sure they've like figured out a way to like balance that. So you see, I looked at the controls and stuff. I'm yeah. very interested in this. Uh, you see, sometimes when he's moving around, you'll see a crosshair come up and like the the sides have like a vignette. Yeah, you, you'll see it right here. Yeah. 
So that's hitting L2. Uh-huh. Instead of ADSing, like aiming down the sights, uh-huh. it will bring up a uh, crosshair and like it's called like focus mode. Yeah. So what I think that might be doing is you might have to do that before you shoot mm-hmm. and it might force you to stop moving. Okay. Like like Resident Evil 4 type, yeah. type deal. Because in Valorant, uh, and it, same thing with, with uh, Counter-Strike, if you're moving while you try to shoot, you shoot erratically. Right. Like you don't, it's not accurate at all. Um, so that might be one of their ways to get around aim assist or to make it so you can't move and shoot. There, yeah. there might be some weird mechanic with the focus mode. Mm-hmm. Now, Counter-Strike did have a console version and it did have uh controller support. Uh-huh. Uh, it was horrible, the controller support. And they didn't have anything like a focus mode or anything. So this might be their way to uh, fix that. Uh, right now, it's going to be in beta. Uh, limited beta test kicking off June 14th. I've uh, applied to the beta. So okay. I'm, I want to try it. I'm yeah, very yeah. interested in how, in how this is going to work. I don't think I'm ever going to switch to playing this fucking game on console. No, I imagine but, if, like, if you're playing it right now on PC, you're going to keep playing it on PC. Yeah. It, it, it very much... Like, I would always opt to use a controller over a mouse and keyboard because I just think it's more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, but for a game like this, I understand why people opt for a mouse and keyboard. Mm-hmm. I'd rather play this game with a mouse and keyboard. Call of Duty, I still play with a controller even when I play it on computer. Right. Um, another game that I like to play with mouse and keyboard, uh, Neon White, because it's very similar where uh, aiming is, is very important. And yeah. they, they, I don't think there's any aim assist on a controller. So. Okay. All right, so that's my thoughts. Hopefully, I- I'm happy that a lot more people will get to experience Valorant. Yeah. But uh, I- I'm assuming it'll be free to play, but it's in beta, so we'll get it eventually. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hyperlight Breaker. This is interesting because Hyperlight Drifter was awesome. Yes, and this is the 3D sequel to it. So. This game has. We've been talking about this game forever. Or there was, an- was there another game? There's uh, Hyperlight Drifter, and yeah. then there might have been another one. Well, let me see. Yeah, no, this is Hyperlight Breaker. Hyperlight Drifter. Uh, no, Hyperlight Breaker is the next one. Wow. Okay, well, uh, I guess we've just been waiting for this game for a really long time. Yeah. So, uh, I'm interested in that one because I really liked Hyperlight Drifter. If you yeah. like, uh, if you like the look of this, and you like uh top down, uh. Retro Zelda games, you would like Hyper Light Drifter. Uh, Delta Force Hawk Ops. So I watched the trailer for this because I'm interested in, um, you know, these types of tactical shooters. Mm-hmm. Saw nothing interesting here. <laughs> this just looks Yeah, like it looks like every other one. Yeah. So there's nothing about, like, I'm kind of jonesing for, like, a, like, an old Rainbow Six style yeah. uh, tactical shooter. And this is not going to scratch that itch. You know what might? That uh, body cam game. Oh, yeah. That game looks sick. Uh, next, we got uh, Neva, uh, an emotionally charged action adventure from the developer of Gree. Uh, Black Myth Wukong. Uh, oh. So this game is interesting because the physical, I believe it's this game, physical version of this game does not come with a disc. And it's coming the physical version. Yes, it's coming to console. It was a re- weird reason they gave for that. Yeah. Knife. I'm trying to look up the the exact reason it gave. Also, the guy the the guy who runs the studio for this game like hates women or something. Make yeah, that's, seems like right. I, that's all I think about when I see this game. Yeah. Uh Souls like RPG Black Myth Wukong will not be available for Xbox Series X at launch. Um while past releases from developer game sites have um have, have come to Xbox, it's on, only coming to PC and PS5 on August 20th. Uh it doesn't say why it's not coming. So it's not coming to Xbox just yet. It's uh been delayed, but they're not saying why. And I'm also not seeing why it's not coming with the disc. Well, anyway, next anyway. one is Hunitsu Gami. The Path of the Goddess. This is this is that Capcom game. Capcom that yes. I, everyone thought was Onimusha, but it's not. Yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, uh, it is a fantasy strategy action game. It's 
kind of it kind of looks like Dynasty Warriors. It's very bright. I think you could play with other people too. Okay. Am I making that shit up? Oh, strategy action game. Oh, never mind. Like well, I don't know how this. I need to. I need to like see a review of this because yeah. I I need to understand how it works because it looks like a third person action game, but then I just saw them like plotting moves and that, yeah. This could go uh, pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Is that it? That's it for Summer Games Fest, the summer, the Jeff Keighley Showcase. Uh, Next up is... Anything, anything really amazing? Like, I mean, there's some interesting drops, like, yeah. like the fact that Horizon... Lego Horizon looks cool. And that it's coming to Switch. Uh, Sonic and Shadow... Uh, but we knew about Sonic. We knew and about that. The Night Springs DLC. When I eventually get to play Alan Wake, that looks good. Um, Power Rangers. But like, there's none of these games are like, you know, I'm going to stop what I'm doing and play this immediately. Like, there's good yeah. stuff here, but none of it's like stop the press is good stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. I, I, I agree. But that's Summer Games Fest. Like, uh, the, the, the proper the proper thing proper yeah, summer yeah. games fest yeah and e3 didn't really have that it it, it yeah. was always individual publishers doing their own yeah thing. uh so one of those publishers still doing it yep so i guess sony did it already they did it like the week prior did they they had a they had a, a state of play like two weeks ago oh that's right you know? yeah and we, we talked about it I yes think. um i think we talked about it last week in the in the recorded episode I think we plowed through it. We must have. Yeah. So we definitely talked about it. Okay. So that happened already. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it came like a fart in the wind. Yeah. Uh, and now this is the Xbox showcase, which I was like looking through on Twitter because I was on a plane while I was going on and couldn't yeah. watch the video. So I don't know much of what happened. Okay. Uh, so this is from Microsoft's actual okay. blog post of it. Uh, upcoming titles from Activision, Bethesda, Blizzard, and Xbox Game Studios. Um, Art of Mythology Retold. Uh, f- sure. I don't mm-hmm. know why they're starting with that one or why they're starting with Avowed getting a new trailer. Um, sure, yeah, so whatever. Avowed is Obsidian. Okay. Yes. People are very interested yes, in Yes, I know that. Um, but the sh- they started the showcase with Black Ops 6. Uh, f- which I think everybody wants to see. Like, yeah. M- most people would be interested in. Um, yeah, it looks like a Call of Duty game. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know what more you can say about it that hasn't been said already. It's slowly getting more and more modern. It's in 1991. I remember that year. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I don't know how interested I'm going to be in the single player. I still like to play uh, Warzone, and this will have Warzone integration, I'm sure. Yep. Um, I might be interested in the single player, but uh, I, I, I don't know. If it, it's probably just going to be Call of Duty. Yeah. I would maybe be interested in the single player if the game wasn't 300 gigs and required an internet connection. Yeah, now, so it's not in the key, but like it has come out, and it was revealed that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will be 300 gigs. 309. Your, 309 gigs in, on your hard drive. And not only that, it will require a constant internet connection through all game modes for quote unquote texture loading. So a lot we could talk about there. Yeah. So uh, I tweeted about this and apparently the, the defense is that that is the uh, the Xbox storefront, uh, 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 the amount of storage that the Xbox storefront says that you need for the Call of Duty HQ app that is required to... De- like, when you get a digital version of Call of Duty now, you don't get Call of Duty Black Ops 6. You get Call of Duty HQ. Yes. And then from there, you download Call of Duty Black Ops 6. So the Xbox storefront page is telling you that Call of Duty HQ is 309 gigabytes. Right. So people are like, that's probably including Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. And that's probably true, but I'll say that when Modern Warfare 3 came out, it required that you downloaded all of Modern Warfare 2 in order to play Modern Warfare Mm -hmm. 3. Even if you didn't own Modern Warfare 2, it would still download all of the assets of Modern Warfare 2 and lock you from playing Modern Warfare 2 because you don't own it. 
So it is possible that at launch, this will require you to download Modern Warfare 2 and Modern Warfare 3. So according to the official Call of Duty Updates Twitter account, uh, the estimated file size currently uh, displayed on the Black Ops 6 pre-order pages does not represent the download size or disk footprint for Black Ops 6. The sizes as shown include the full installation of Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3, Warzone, and all relevant content packs, including all localized languages combined with uh, combined, which is not representative of a typical of a typical player uh, install experience. Players will be able to download Black Ops 6 at launch without downloading any other Call of Duty titles or all of the language packs. The actual estimation of the Black Ops 6 file size will be will be available closer to launch. Oh, so they don't have one yet. Correct. According to them. Now, I should, you know, anecdotally, from my, my most recent Call of Duty experience was actually with Black Ops Cold War. And that game on its own was 200 gigs. Just that one game. And there's an option because I I just like took a month between playing it, and there's an option in it like, hey, you haven't played in a while. This is taking up a lot of space. Do you want to clear some space? And I hit yes. And the thing that it clears first from the storage space is the single player because they just assume you're <laughs> yeah. playing the multiplayer, and the single player only takes off about like 50 gigs. So the rest of the fucking game is still 150 yeah. gigs. Yeah. I believe them that it's not going to be 309 gigs, but I don't believe them that it will be small. Like, yeah. like it, it will be over 100 gigs. It might be close to 200 gigs. Yeah. Uh, especially because this is the next gen Call of Duty. It's freaking high resolution and everything. Now, the other controversy is that it has, uh, it streams the textures. Yeah. That's something that Modern Warfare 3 single player did. It had, it had an option to stream the textures. And I heard that it actually did a pretty decent job of that. Okay. And that is a way for them to reduce the uh the the, the loading times and the file size of the game. <laughs> so, if the fucking file size is big anyway and it requires an internet connection for you to download these textures, that is dumb. This is like hands down the most poorly optimized triple a game yeah like that i have it's ever bad. seen like it's bad how is how do you let if this is a call of duty game yeah they look pretty but like there's not a lot going on under the hood like they're they're grossly linear experiences the multiplayer maps yeah they're you know pretty expansive but they're not that different year uh year on year so there's no reasonable excuse for it to be more than 100 i'll give you 100 gigs there's no reason for it to be more than that other than poor optimization and poor yeah. planning so i'd imagine that modern warfare 3 was a test for those uh streaming textures yeah uh i'm ho it seems like the test was positive and that it'll work hopefully that is a way to get the file size down a lot um i will say call of duty has been poorly optimized recently mm -hmm. uh it's poorly optimized in the way that all the file sizes are really big but it's also been poorly optimized where the game crashes all the time and it runs poorly on different hardwares yeah i will say it has gotten a lot better where it runs good on different types of hardware now uh but uh yeah the file size is still insane uh i'm trying to look up i'm just curious because a thought a, a thought crossed my mind that maybe the file size is this bad because they've you know, always had bad files be, well because the games have to come out every year on the dot regardless of what notable idiot bobby Kodak says they, they don't have, have to come... time to to optimize well it. that's that's what i want to know i'm trying to look up what the madden file size <laughs> is because madden also comes out every year on time yeah regardless of whether or not it's finished but, but like but that's like a copy paste yeah then call of duty isn't <laughs> Like at this point, like Madden can't be any more than a hundred gigs. What am what am what am I looking for here? Why don't they just list the fucking gigs on the page, like on the website? FIFA normally? is definitely a copy paste. Yeah, or uh, approximate file size fifty four gigs for Madden. Honestly, a lot more than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> but That's like, honestly pretty a lot of the thing, gigs. But, but think about it though, like Madden, you have you know 
all these football plays and mechanics. You have like all the teams and all the different individual players. You have all the stadiums. You have all the the random bullshit that Madden games usually have. Yeah, but think about the different stadiums versus different whole ass entire environments. You know, like a stadium is a stadium is a stadium. Right, but we're, <laughs> but like think about it. Like Madden twenty twenty four. Like they push realism very hard, mm -hmm. so they try to make all the stadiums look like they actually do in real life. Yeah. So like there's a lot of like detail and like processing that has to go into doing that. But they're still able to make a 54 gigs. Call of Duty is literally four times the size of this. Yeah. Yeah. For a very similar gameplay length. I'd imagine most of it is environments and just not deleting old shit that doesn't that you don't need yeah. anymore. The amount that it requires out of you is pretty insane. Yeah. And every time there's an update now, it requires me to recompile all of the shaders because that's that's a PC problem. That yeah. doesn't happen on console, I don't think. Uh, the light, uh, well, it's not FIFA anymore. FC24 is 60, 64 gigs. That's honestly more than I thought. Yeah. And that's like, that has, you know, that's international. That has more teams and stadiums to render. Mm -hmm. So there you go. So I, I would still expect this to be pretty big. But, yeah. uh, they're saying it'll be less than 309 gigabytes. I'm going to guess 200. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, other than that... And I'm going to want Warzone, too. Yeah, but oh. like Warzone's free. You can get that on your own. On its own. Yeah, it's free, but it's... My, my hard drive space isn't yeah. free. <laughs> and like... Warzone's probably going to require me to still have Modern Warfare 3 and Modern Warfare 2 downloaded. So yeah. I'm going to have fucking four Call of Duty games on my hard drive. That's insane. You might have to actually... I don't have a big SSD in my computer. Yeah. Well, now you might have to get one. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm going to have to get another one. And I don't know. I don't even know if I have room on my motherboard. Anyway, from a dumb first-person shooter to a dumb but good kind of dumb first-person shooter, it's Doom the Dark Ages. Uh, this looks good. This is a prequel to the recent Doom games. I haven't seen this. Uh, it... it well, okay. It looks like a Doom game. Mm -hmm. That means it looks fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's very different. Like it kind of they kind of did a really good job of like making it look like Doom, but like kind of like Doom set a thousand years in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, so like all the weapons have like this like retro, not retro, but like very very old look to them. You get like a chainsaw shield in it. So is this Doom guy? <sighs> Is this a different guy? This, how do I put this in the nicest way possible? <laughs> the lore of the new Doom games makes no sense. Okay. So like. This does look fucking it cool. Does, right, look at it. Like, you're like, you're the Doom, you're the, you're the Doom Slayer. Your yeah. character is the Doom Slayer. Mm -hmm. He is maybe the original Doom guy, but then the DLC for Doom Eternal, the original Doom guy was the bad guy. And you had oh. to take him out. None of it makes sense. It's all dumb. What was supposed to be just a fun, like, romp through hell, like tearing uh, demons in half, has turned into this, like, epic, grandiose, Lord of the Rings style fantasy epic that it didn't need to be. They just add so much, like, context and weight to it that it kind of bogs down, like, the fun and the humor of what, you know, Doom 2016 actually was. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I'm not. I this is a game. I am not 100 percent not in it for the lore. I just want to like put a skull in a gun and let the skull be bullets. That's <laughs> that's what I'm here for. I feel like this text isn't centered. Yeah. Me. Uh, Fable. We're getting a new Fable game. This is from Playground Games. Uh, it's been a while. I, we didn't get a whole Fable on the entire Xbox One generation, and that's like one of their marquee franchises. Yeah, and this is like a silly like. Yeah, it's, it's a game. fun RPG. You know, it doesn't help that they closed down Lionhead Studios, the original Fable team. Mm -hmm. But, you know, maybe Playground can... Playground games in collaboration with Eidos Montreal. This so, looks really good. Like, like the... Uh, yeah. The, the graphics look incredible. <gasps> yeah. And the facial animations look amazing. Yeah, it looks very good. Uh, next up, Gears of War E-Day. Everyone thought we were getting Gear 6. This is... Um, a prequel game this is um about dom and marcus the original protagonists of gears of war um during the events of emergence day when like they first fought the locusts mm -hmm. um i like the gears of war games uh i will probably i haven't played gears 5 yet but i still want to play it i'll probably play this one at some point i don't know if 
this was the way to go with the series. I think going forward would have been a better idea rather than going backwards. You know oh, what I mean? It's a prequel. It's a prequel. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not a huge Gears fan. Yeah. I played some of them, and I, I, I kind of didn't, didn't. It it didn't click for I, me. I, I was like burnt out by three, but like for some weird reason, like four like roped me back in. I had a lot of fun with four, mm-hmm. and I want to. Ch- I have five. I want to try five. Um, but I don't know. To me, like going back to Dom and Marcus, like it, it kind of reeks of like we don't know what we're doing, so we're just gonna go back to like what worked before, mm-hmm. rather than just try to push forward and do something new. Yeah, I, do, I was surprised that Dom's in it. Yeah, I do appreciate like it's it's trying to or be more Marcus, of a, I guess. it's trying to be more of a horror focused game, which the first one was, and they kind of strayed away from that. Mm-hmm. So that'll be pretty cool. Okay. Uh, so friggin' uh, there I saw some shit go down on Twitter. Uh, Jeff Keeley, I'm trying to find his tweet now. Okay. He tweeted uh about this game. And he said the really good. Did, did I take a screenshot of it? I might. He he said something like uh, the really good trailer uh, from uh, the really good gears. Here here it is. The great Gears of War piece was a CG from Blur Studios using in-game assets from Unreal Engine Five. Uh, game info, and then he just and then it's just a blurb about the game. Okay. People were pissed about this. This okay. tweet, this seemingly innocuous tweet. Mm-hmm. Because he called it a CG. Okay. Uh, and then he and then he also says in the same tweet, using in-game assets from Unreal Engine Five. Mm-hmm. People, uh, it actually got community noted. I, yeah, I'm, I see that now. So the community note says, although CG is a broad and encompassing term, the use of such term here, without further detail, is slightly in bad faith. Mm-hmm. They're yelling at Jeff Keighley here. According to Jameer Blanco, uh, cinema cinematic character and creature artist at blizzard the game the the trailer was rendered in real time in unreal engine 5 okay how is that different than what he said i think um, it's all about context when people hear that it's a cg trailer they are they assume that it's not exactly what the game is going to look like because this stems from back in the day when the the cg cinematic trailers obviously looked nothing like what the actual game is going to be so Game studios back then and to this day have to be very specific and clarify in engine using in engine assets and stuff running on a specific system. Like they have to specifically clarify that so that people are aware that this is actually what the game is supposed to look like. I don't think there's anything wrong with him saying it's a CG that uses in game assets. I think he because the game's not going to look like that. (laughs) There's no shot the game's looking like that. There was no gameplay in that trailer. I mean, just because there's no gameplay in the trailer doesn't mean the game's not going to look like that. I think I, th- I you think know the game, that they're that they're putting all the processing into, the, I, I'm into sure, this trailer. I'm sure there's I'm sure it's been bullshotted, but I think we live in an age where the game can look very close to that mm-hmm. with it still being considered in-game footage. I, you know, or I'm, in in engine footage. I think he's getting a lot of flack for saying CG, yeah. and I don't think there's anything wrong with him calling it CG, especially after then clarifying that it is using in game assets. And then people are shitting on him for not clarifying that it's using in game assets. Well, what he should have said was this is a trailer using in game assets. However, it is not gameplay. That's as clear as you can be. I think I that's what is a CG. It's it's a computer graphic. That's right. what this is. Yeah. So there's more to this. Uh, Tom Warren, I forgot who he was. The Verge. The Verge. He tweeted, reducing this technical work to quote just CG is very incorrect. The Gears of War trailer was rendered in real time using in-game textures, models, environments, and ray trace lighting far more than CG. Well, so, okay, so the thing is, like, C- CG also implies that it was, ren- like, when you're playing a game, CG means it, like, it implies that it was rendered, pre-rendered. Pre- pre- yeah, yeah, pre-rendered. Yeah. It, imply- and it, it implies not- pre-rendered. Yeah. He, s- he quoted and said, just CG. No one ever said just CG. People are just hearing CG and saying that, and, and assuming that CG is a bad term. Well. <sighs> Tom Warren deleted this tweet. <laughs> I t- this was like four in the morning. I tweeted back and I yeah. and I said, "This is a wild thing to be mad about." 
And my tweet isn't there anymore. I don't know. Uh, I, I guess it got removed when he yeah. deleted this tweet. But still, I thought this was like a wild controversy to, to get into this weird semantic argument about right. what is a, a cinematic trailer versus a pre-rendered trailer versus a CG. Literally just CG. Right. People hearing CG and thinking that that's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Where when we're fucking at Summer Games Fest and everything is a cinematic trailer. Well, what's the problem? There's a lot of cinematic trailers, but we just saw Doom Etern uh, Doom the Dark Age showed off what gameplay is supposed to look like. Yeah, Call that, of Duty did. That's pre-rendered all hell. Yeah. Like the Doom stuff looked like it was on rails. Most of the stuff is like pre-rendered. Yeah. But like, uh, Keeley should have been, I guess, more specific in saying that, you know, the game, like this is all using in engine assets like this is what the game is supposed to look like yeah because like there's you know context matters yeah it's it but again he said in-game assets right it's just it's just a weird semantic argument that, right. that that happened about this game not gonna play it whatever how yeah. did you like uh your favorite indiana jones uh it looks good i'm excited i was i thought it was cool that they showed off like the the snow area I didn't like how it was mostly like a cinematic trailer. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't really show like any gameplay to it. But, you know, it's got the Indiana Jones vibe going. I'm definitely going to get this game okay. when it comes. I'm definitely going to. They didn't announce. They just announced it was coming this year. They didn't announce a pre-orders or anything. They announced a specific release date. I'm just waiting for them to announce the pre-orders and stuff because I want to know if the special edition is going to come with a hat. I need <laughs> to buy that. I'd imagine that this will be out before the holidays. At some yeah. Point. So that'll be good. Uh, so, th yeah, this is one of the few Xbox <laughs> games that I'm uh, actually going to play. Yeah. I don't know how far, far I'll get, but... And uh, now, uh, there was still some controversy about this again being uh, first person. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> like, Indiana Jones... I've said this before. Indiana Jones has been ripped off by, like, every other adventure video game, Uncharted, Tomb Raider, and past Indiana Jones games have basically been along that style. If, if you want the king of fun archaeological adventures to have a good video game. He needs to stand out and be different. And if first person is the way to do it, then first person is the way to do it. I'm totally fine with first person. The latest <laughs> yeah. argument I've seen is an accessibility issue. Some people get sick with first person game. I, you know, I understand that, you know, don't play the game then. I don't know what so, you want from me. I know people, I've known people who got sick with first person games and it was only certain first person games. There right. are accessibility options you can have within a first person game that can minimize your motion sickness. Yeah. Which I think you shouldn't look at a uh, first person game and immediately think you're going to get sick. Over yeah. It. And also too, like we live in like the golden age of accessibility options. Yeah. So like there, there've got to be like enough tweaks in the menus of this to like make it so uh, if you don't get sick playing this game uh yes uh nijimua in the chat is bringing up that resident evil games uh, i think resident evil 8 has first person and third person well they added third person after that was like a yeah and it's it would be wild to assume to to assume that all of these games would have a third person option you can't yeah. just be like oh here's third person yeah it's that's a huge undertaking yeah. to make a first person game into a third person game mm -hmm. look at firewatch you ever seen the the uh the the boundary break of that game yeah. like like there it looks fucking bizarre yeah. when you're not in first person they do a lot to to make it look good in first person but then bringing it out to third person will break a lot of the game. And yeah. You have to redesign the game from the ground up to work in third person as well. I mean, Indiana Jones probably could work as a third person because there are like third person elements to it. Like when he's climbing or when he's swinging or like certain puzzles and stuff like it, it'll break away from first person. But the, the majority of it is in first person. Yeah. So maybe they, they do have the ability to like make it a third person game at some point. But I think that first person is like the easiest way to make this different from all the other similar games out there if it's designed to be in first person yeah. it's gonna be in first person yeah <laughs> having it be third person makes it a fundamentally different game yeah uh flight simulator 2024 Jesus Christ. coming out this year do they just cool do this every year i don't even know is it an updated version every year uh it's the next installment of the flight simulator franchise 
Uh, this is not a game that needs to be annualized. No. Um, you just do a content update every yeah, year. Yeah, it's a service. This yeah. should be a service. Like, this, of, of all games, like, this is very much a service. I don't know what 24, can, how it can be any different from 23 yeah. or as something that can't be updated via patch, you know? Mm -hmm. Perfect dog. Yeah, this was good. I I was <laughs> no, I'm serious. I was like pumped for this. This was like really exciting for me. I it just nothing about it tells me this is perfect dark other than that they called it perfect dark and she has red hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, we knew going in that this was going to be a complete reboot of the, of the series. Like the original yeah. trailer that they showed off however long ago. If you show me this part, I would yeah. be like that is uh Starfield. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Well, this is only just like a level of the game. Like, we don't like. We know it's futuristic. We know it's sci-fi. We know like towards the end of the trailer, it looks like they're looking at something in space or whatnot. So, I mean, it looks like this could be the perfect dark game for the modern era. It's say it's said to be taking influence from like uh, immersion sim games like uh, Deus Ex and Thief and um, oh, what's the other one? Uh, the arcane prey game that came okay, out a couple years ago cool. so yeah it's not going to be just a straight first person shooter like you, there's stealth elements there's platforming elements there's gadgets there's and parkour all there's parkour yeah so i'm like i'm excited this might actually be good don't I mean, ruin this for me i'm gonna play it yeah but you know i was expecting more of a nostalgia trip and less of a you know complete reboot to try to get new people into the franchise well you know? i mean it's been like how long since the last perfect dark game it's been even longer since the last good perfect dark game. yeah i completely forgot about the yeah <laughs> the exactly perfect dark zero completely forgot about it so like they need to do something that like, they've been sitting on this for eons now yeah. so you might as well just take you know start from scratch so I tweeted that I was upset with the visual style of the game because yeah. it just seems like every bland sci-fi game recently. Like yeah. the style is the same across all new futuristic games. And somebody tweeted back to me and said, just so you remember, this is what Perfect Dark looked like. <laughs> and I was like, yes, it was a weird, <laughs> like, like silly, goofy ass game. Yeah. And that's what the alien looked like. You know, it was like yeah. silly on purpose. Yeah. And like that's what I was kind of expecting. Yeah. I think it also doesn't help that like it, it's not being made by Rare. This game is yeah. being made by a new studio, uh, the initiative and collaboration with Crystal Dynamics. So it's obviously going to be a very different experience. Um, also, I saw this today, the print ad for Perfect Dark. <laughs> and it said, this is from 20, uh, uh, the year 2000. I'm sorry. Yeah. It says, it's 2023 AD. So already, <laughs> already we're in yeah. for it. Uh, war wages under the sea. I don't remember there being under the sea stuff. There was a level underwater. Yeah, you were in like an underwater facility. Aliens conspire with big businesses. The president is about to be cloned. At times like these, bullets are a girl's best friend. Now, it would be cool if it was... <clears throat> the 2000s version of the future yeah like the year is 2023 and it's all futuristic but like how we would have seen right the, the future from yeah. that perspective that is more like what i would have expected from from a perfect dark reboot but i'm also for completely forgetting that perfect dark zero exists yeah i don't know anything about that game or how that i believe was that was a it's supposed to be a prequel to perfect dark but even that was like drastically different from what the original Perfect Dark was. Mm -hmm. So, so that's how I feel about it. I'm okay. gonna play it. I'm sure it'll be fine. But I would have been looking more for something that was like stylized in a way like like that. Like, right? I, I think that would have been a good idea. Maybe just something different that's just different looking than yeah the way every futuristic game is. Well, again, right we only saw like the one level. And so we don't know what the rest of the game is going to look mm -hmm. like. You know, hopefully it does get a little weird in sci-fi and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, that would be great. I just wish, you know, her jaw wasn't so manly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, I want those hot polygons. Yeah, seriously. Hot N64 polygons. Uh, what is this? Where are we now? Uh, I don't even know. South of Midnight. South uh, of Midnight? Yeah. 
No, this is not what I was thinking of. Uh, beautiful third person action adventure game from We Happy Few creator. Oh, We Happy Few. That game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe forget this one. Running at 12 frames a second. Yeah. It's supposed to look like stop motion, probably. Uh, is it? Oh, that's so weird. It, it's, it's weird because the whole game it is probably 60. Yeah, it's yeah. 60 frames per second. But her animations are stop not. motion. Okay. Very, very weird looking. Uh, next up, we got a uh, trailer for State of Decay 3. I haven't played any of those games. Can't tell you anything about oh. it. Uh, world premieres and new games from our partners. Assassin's Creed Shadows gameplay footage, mm -hmm. um, which looks good. Uh, Adam Fall. A, oh, who is this from? This is from somebody famous. Oh, from the Sniper Elite and, and uh, Zombie Army uh, creators, Rebellion Studios. So this is their next game. Oh, so doesn't look anything like Sniper Elite. No, no, it does not. Uh, next is Expedition 33. Uh, yeah. After that <laughs> is uh, Dragon Age The Veil. People are mad that uh, this is the next Dragon Age game from Bioware. People are mad that this just looks like uh, medieval Mass Effect. Oh. Which, like, why? You know, that's the, how Bioware makes their games. <laughs> they have a template now. I guess, um... I guess because, like, the original Dragon Age was, yeah, it was very, very different. different from Mass Effect. And now they're just do, applying the Mass Effect style I to... I mean, this is a cinematic trailer, so we, yeah. don't, we have no idea. Yeah, we have no idea what it's going to look like. So... Uh, Flintlock, the Siege Dawn. Uh, this there's a demo for this on Steam right now. I was debating whether or not to try it. Uh, Why? What is the? I have no idea. Uh, blending classic Souls mechanics with brutal, fast-paced combat system. Oh, looks kind of cool. Yeah, might be worth a, a look. Frag, Frag punk. punk. Woo! Uh, looking for a new competitive first-person shooter? No. Because everybody's already playing a competitive first-person shooter. Uh, 5v5 hero shooter. Get out of my face. Yeah. We're done. We're done uh, with that. Life is Strange double exposure. Uh, a new Life is Strange game with the original star Max Clawfield. Okay. Okay, I'm good. All you Life is Strange people. Mecha, Mecha break. break. Yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you like Gundams? Yeah. How about sick. these Gundams? Colossal war machines yeah. on treacherous terrain, even though they're flying. This looks fucking awesome. <laughs> Prepare for adrenaline pumping battles, lightning fast maneuvers, and explosive firepower. Mecha breaks. Xbox closed beta will be launching. Uh, uh, Xbox. Six v six battle mode, three v three arena mode. Uh, Up to sixty player p player versus environment versus player. Yeah, <laughs> this game. Uh, I hope there's. I'm gonna hate this game, but um, I, 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 me I too. Try like it. it just it sounds awesome. Get uh, me in the beta. How do I get in the beta? Uh, well, you look that up. I will uh, talk about the next game that was revealed: Metal Gear Solid Delta Snake okay. Eater. New gameplay just footage. Just before this uh, podcast, I watched the um, trailer. Is this the trailer that I watched? Yes. Okay. I watched this trailer. So previously, when this was announced, I was a little disappointed because I'm always disappointed. I'm never happy. Yeah. I was a little disappointed because it didn't look like Snake Eater. It just looked like a generic Unreal Engine game. Right. There was no style or anything. They got rid of the piss filter. Yeah. Uh, this looks awesome now. Yeah. This looks a lot more like... For some reason, this just looks like what a PS2 game looks like. This this looks like what I imagined the PS2 game to look like. Yeah, you know, like yeah, like, like what, sitting there playing on a PlayStation Two. This is this, what my this imagination. Is, this saw. is your memory of the game. Yes, and that's exactly so. how a remake should be. Yes, uh, or a remaster or whatever. It, it looks good. Uh, there was also a a ten minute uh, walkthrough of the gameplay footage with David Hayter. Yeah, like, that I did post, watch. That I watched. Um, apparently, so did he redo his voice lines? Yeah. They okay. got, if they're not using original audio, they got uh, most of the cast back to redo audio. Because the little voice lines that were in this trailer sounded awesome. Yeah. No, th sounded they're him. exactly like they're, they're the him. original. Um, also, there's going to be two gameplay modes. There is the modern mode and legacy mode. Legacy mode is the old school over overhead view of the game. Oh, okay. And you can apply the piss filter. Yeah. <laughs> so... 
that's so cool. his filter is just a yellow filter yeah. over the whole video um like a color grade also too uh something they mentioned in that trailer uh your the injuries you accumulate in the game like stay with you oh like you know you even after you like fix yourself you could still have like the scars of like you know your previous fights throughout the entire game i don't know how that's going to affect gameplay because like in real life if you break your leg that's not healing right away yeah you know so like are you gonna limp the entire game like what's the deal with that and there's got to be a way to like tweak that I'd imagine it would just be a visual yeah thing that you're so, interested but that you. could be interesting that would be that i would i'm curious to see how that plays out boss not old enough yeah she should be just a little she bit should be, yeah. she's supposed to be like his mom yeah basically so uh but otherwise i think it looks I, i'm happy with how it looks yeah here's hoping they don't make it political <laughs> that was a you, did you see that? Of course that I clip? did. Of course that, I did. I course was, I saw every stupid fucking that thing was pretty good. you idiots say. And then I saw somebody who was like, uh, well, I think what he means is they don't just put in, uh, uh, like, uh, 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 commentary about the political atmosphere of today and it's like no that's literally yeah. fucking metal gear dude <laughs> they literally do that in every game yeah. they talk about the political atmosphere of right now yes so fuck you <laughs> also the whole yes yes if you've never played metal gear before they are all all of them heavily like, political god damn it there's there's uh undertones in every single one no they're not undertones bob they're overtones, they're overtones. <laughs> they are completely there's overtones there's allegories there's memes there's memes yes um yes and there's but it's part of what makes it awesome yes <laughs> is that it's in your it's in your face yes uh it, anyway. it did kind of make me like actually want to play it i do want I, i've been wanting to replay the metal gear games i've been too cheap to buy the legacy collection because it's still very expensive but you know maybe i'll just you know wait for this mm -hmm. still trying to get through peace walker yeah one of these days uh but yeah i will this is definitely a, a day a day one get for me yeah uh mixtape mixtape uh, uh i mean this looks like it could be kind of cool game like in a, in a weird indie game sort of way mm -hmm. it kind of looks like what i wanted that game 1980x to be like a like a trip through like adolescence like set to the backdrop of something this looks really pretty yeah it's from the people who made the artful escape um and it's it looks like it's gonna have a killer soundtrack for the bands that are on it so this is very well designed yeah and like shot so, and so yeah this, um, this looks really good i'm gonna check that out uh stalker 2 heart of chernobyl uh got a new trailer um that game's been in development for like a decade now uh winter burrow is a cozy survival game Oh, okay. So all you cozy game fans out there, Wu Chang Fallen Feathers. Um, this is different from that other one we showed. <laughs> okay. Uh, Wait, which one is this? I need to see. This nope, is, I don't know. I Souls don't know like one. action RPG launching day one on Xbox and immerses players in the dark late Ming Dynasty. We don't need any more Souls like games. Okay, Thank you we much. don't. It's like do we have the Souls games. Yeah. Uh, next up, Diablo Four Vessel of Hate uh, releases October eighth. Uh, pre order now. Elder Scrolls Online gets a new trailer for Tamriel. Don't care. Fallout 76. Uh, hey, people are playing that again. People so. are playing that again. Apparently, it's uh, not so bad, and people are having a good time with yeah. it. So there you go. It's cool that they're getting DLC. Uh, season Th Sea of Thieves, Season 13. Get out of my face. Uh, Starfield, Shattered Space. Uh, the Darkness Calls. Um, Ooh. The Darkness Calls on, October, on August 26th with World of Warcraft, The War Within. So... New World of Warcraft. Uh, oh, and wow. lastly, for the Xbox showcase at least, uh, new hardware. We're getting three new Xboxes. Yeah, so this is interesting. Yeah. So so we're ooh, that's a cool looking app. I know, right? That's the two terabyte. Yes. Uh the two ter it is, is five fifty. Uh here, let me go. Let's just check out. The price breakdown ain't so bad. The price uh, well, okay, keep going. Yeah, it's uh well no the two terabyte Galaxy Black Special Edition is six hundred dollars. Okay, that's a lot that's for a an lot. extra terabyte. Yeah. Uh, then there's an all white Xbox Series X that is all digital. All digital. This comes with a terabyte of storage for four fifty. So it's fifty dollars less than the current one, which yes. also has a terabyte of storage. Yes. 
Now, you would think smart thing to do would be sell that version of the Xbox Series X with the two terabyte hard drive yeah. for the same price as the one with the disc, but apparently not. No. Uh, and then the Series S is just the Series S. Oh, and they have the a black Series S that has more. Well, the black Series S was the terabyte one, yeah. and now they're just making the white Series S the terabyte one. Oh, so this white one is the oh. So how much is that? Is that three uh three fifty? Okay, so there's no more regular Series S. Though. I guess not, because that was three hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. Lame. Fans can purchase the carbon black Series S with one terabyte while supplies last. That's really lame. Yeah. This is dumb. I lo I really like the look of the uh the the new black two terabyte xbox yeah. series x but i'm not a fan of this price breakdown something should have been cheaper yeah i mean i it, mean everything got a lot more expensive to produce now uh everybody's charging more for stuff yeah so i i i get it but it's uh it's unfortunate yeah especially this far into the life cycle yeah like this should have been like you know the mid the mid console refresh just make the Series S a full terabyte across the board for the same price. Yeah. So we were gonna get that Brooklyn console. That I, was like the 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 rumor. Well, is wasn't uh, the white Series X Brooklyn? Which one was the tube? Brooklyn. Not, uh, that I thought the white Series. Well, the, the oh. tube was Brooklyn. Well, there but was think, like, remember we were dancing around, maybe it would be like a spec bump or yeah. a next gen uh, uh, Xbox or something. Yeah, but I think that ultimately it's this now, okay. the white Series X. Well, if you're, if you're a fan of right angles, yeah. you'll, you'll, you'll be really happy to know that the tube isn't, isn't happening. It, it, can they at least make the Galaxy Black controller available? Because... That's cool. That looks good. Yeah. Uh, Wood in the chat said, Bob, hear me out. New game for game nights, Fallout 76. Wood, shut the fuck up. <laughs> We're playing Mecha Break. Okay? 6v6. Yeah. Look at this fucking shit. I bet you it's, it's fucking heavy metal. Please let it be heavy metal. That's lame. That's lame. Eh. Never mind. Forget it. Forget the whole thing. All right, All right, so a little, little hardware, not very impressive. Xbox, yeah. great showcase. Yes, so. probably the best showcase of the, the weekend, Yeah, honestly. Uh, there's a couple more things from Xbox. Uh, yeah. One of them being Phil Spencer saying that they need to make a handheld. Uh, I'll just try to find the quote because it's already 930. <laughs> yeah, uh, <Jesus> <laughs> Uh, when asked about an Xbox handheld, the future for us in hardware is pretty awesome. Uh, the work that the team is doing around different form factors and different ways to play, I'm incredibly excited about. Uh, today was about the games, but we will have time to come out and talk more about platform. Pressed on whether an Xbox handheld uh, would stream games or play them locally, Spencer dropped further hint that Microsoft is looking at a true handheld gaming device rather than something like the PlayStation Portal. He said, I like my ROG Ally, my Lenovo Legion Go, my Steam Deck. I think being able to play games locally is really important. Good. That's yes. good news. Yes. I think I think if they were to release an Xbox handheld, I think that would actually that might actually save the platform. That would be huge for them. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh right now, a big reason why I like all of these PC handhelds is because uh Steam is just so versatile. Yeah. I could just play Steam games wherever I want. Yeah. Uh X, if anybody has any chance to compete with Steam, it is Microsoft. hundred percent. Because yeah. I could do the same shit yeah. with my, with 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 the Xbox and and the Microsoft yeah, storefront, so, and I could play it on my Xbox. I have, I mean, between the two of us, we and have like Game Pass. We have like seven, no, like almost twenty years of Xbox games just sitting on our Xbox that yeah. we can now play like on the go. That yeah. that would be phenomenal. Yeah. So. You know? There is a huge chance that Microsoft really shakes things up if they if they decide yeah. to make a handheld, and I think they will. Yeah. Uh, it's just how is it gonna work? Yeah. Um. All right. So one last thing was Halo One coming to PS Five. Uh, there was a rumor. A new report uh, at the Verge offers um 
could be clues to the platform's uh, future, including a remaster of Halo Combat Evolved being in development and possibly bringing the franchise to PlayStation for the first time. This is part of uh, what Windows Central called Project Latitude, an initiative born out of the desire to move profit and loss breakdown of Xbox and its first party games. Tom Warren at The Verge has followed that up with more details in his newsletter. Uh, he un his understanding is that while games like Starfield, Hellblade 2, and Age of Empires 2 are under consideration when it comes to getting PS5 ports, games like Gear 6 and Fable are unlikely to go multi-platform. That suggests that franchises being considered core to Xbox brands may stay off limits. But what does that mean for Halo? While it's unclear if a future sequel would ever come to PS5, Warren reports that a new remaster of Halo Combat Evolved is in early development and being considered for Sony's platform. That's interesting. Yes. So... Yeah, so that would make sense if, if, if yeah, because you know, there's people who are lifelong Sony guys who have never tried Halo, yeah, and this is an opportunity for them yeah. to do that. It is weird, like, why they would like just completely remaster Halo, and not just port what's in the Master Chief collection, mm -hmm. but you know, maybe this is an opportunity to do something you know, specific for the PlayStation audience, like take advantage of the DualSense controller or whatnot. Halo with DualSense, yeah, uh, where is it? Flo says, did I miss the backlog? Oh, wait, I can't hear that. Backlog! 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 backlog, backlog, backlog. backlog. Yeah, then, why, can't, why can't we hear it? I don't know, man. <laughs> Take a week off, and all of a sudden, everything's Fugazi. Guys, it's backlog time. Yeah, it's hey, time for right. the backlog. This is a show where we reach into our backlog. <laughs> Every game we've ever bought, game. we put into an Excel spreadsheet, and today we're going to pick one at random and talk about it regardless of whether or not we've played it. We're up to nine nine sixty three. Three. Okay. Because I went to Target and took advantage of the clearance section of video games. I'm gonna have to go back and get some more, man. Five dollars for Mortal Kombat eleven. Hell oh yeah, my good lord. All right, we're picking number sixty three. Sixty three. Oh, so close to being nice. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for the Game Boy Color. Ooh. This game sucks. No. <laughs> this game I is bad. I played a lot of this game. I know. Well, I, that's the problem with a lot of Game Boy games. Like that's all you had this on, was, like, road trips and stuff. This was one of the big... No, this wasn't a big one. Was it a big one? It was a clear one. Oh, it was just a regular clear Game yes. Boy Color game. Yes. Okay. <sighs> yeah, that is the problem. There. Oh, yeah, this game yeah. sucked. It's, I remember this now. Yeah, wasn't like, there, like, downhill stuff? Yeah, there was a racing mode. There were two modes in this game. So the, this didn't even try to emulate, like, regular Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Mm -hmm. um, there were two modes in this. There was a, a race mode... And then this vert, uh, uh, vert pipe mode. And that's it. Neither mode is very fun to play. No. Uh, it, it was, it wasn't even trying to be like a Tony. I forgot the game that it was actually like ripping off. I want to say California games, but I don't think that's right. That sounds right. This yeah. top down looks like the old, uh, back to the future for the yes. NES. Yeah, plays. And that's not a compliment. No. That game also is bad. I mean, at least in this, you could do like tricks and stuff. Like you can grind, you can do like uh, kick flips. If you go off of a of a ramp and like you do a trick, mm -hmm. it'll like freeze frame on a picture of your character doing a trick. However, all the characters except for Tony Hawk and Alyssa Steamer look exactly the same. They're <laughs> just dudes in hats. So, am I confusing this with a Game Boy Advance game that we had? So we never, we only had this and Tony Hawk 2 on Game Boy Color. The, the Tony Hawk games on Game Boy Advance were 3D isometric games. Right. Yeah. Those, yeah, I'm thinking of that. Oh, I remember this more. This is Tony Hawk 2. This is Tony Hawk 2, and yeah. I remember this more. This was a better game. Better in the biggest asterisk you can think of. Of... Uh, because this actually tried to be a Tony Hawk game. The Tony Hawk games on Game Boy Advance are like actually pretty popular. I never liked them. I thought they were all bad. This is what most people think of when they think of. Tony okay, Hawk that actually Hawk. looks pretty good. Yeah, for the time it was, I just couldn't get my head past like the the isometric look. Mm -hmm. This it. just looks like Tony Hawk on on the Game Boy. Yeah, Advance. like that's that's what Tony Hawk probably should have looked it, like. So. I'd imagine that Tony Hawk 2 was probably better on the Game Boy Color. Tony Hawk 1 looks like garbage. It was it was better on the Game Boy Color. You know, it was still wasn't good, but like that was at least trying to be a Tony Hawk game. Uh this game, according to Wikipedia, 
The Game Boy Color version was developed by Japanese company uh, Natsume and released on March 30th, 2000. The Game Boy Color version is an adaptation rather than a true port. Due to the limited capacity of the platform, the game offers two gameplay styles. An overhead view with vertical scrolling and a side-scrolling view, which, uh, which there is a ramp on each side. There are four gameplay modes in which the player can only perform a few tricks. In half-pipe mode... Uh, the player must attempt to achieve the highest score possible. Tournament mode is a five-level vertical scrolling game in which players must race against three computer-controlled skaters and achieve the highest rank. Jumps are made automatically when the player maneuvers onto a ramp, and tricks are displayed in brief static image. Verse mode and rival mode are identical to tournament mode, except the player plays a single level against a single opponent. The opponent in rival mode is computer generated, uh, while the opponent in versus mode is human, uh, which necessitates the use of a link cable. There is no Metacritic that I can find for it for this game. Yeah, I don't think anybody reviewed it. Uh, this is one of those. This is at a weird time when, like, you know, Game Boy Color games would come out. Found the IGN like, review five. There you go. Uh, <laughs> game rankings gave it a sixty-three. Okay. Which is the lowest, that's a lower score than the N-Gage version of Tony Hawk. How did we acquire this game? We probably, like, just, we wanted Game Boy games, and we saw there was a Tony Hawk for Game Boy. Mm -hmm. So, like, Mom, buy us this for Christmas. Mm -hmm. So, she did. That's how we got it. Uh, Also, you said it was made by Natsume. Natsume, uh, they've been making the shitty Harvest Moon game. Are these the shitty Harvest Moon games, yes. or are these the ones that people like? No, these are not the ones that people like. Oh, okay. Yeah, because that has a different oh, name it's, now. it's Story of Seasons. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, bad game. Yeah, don't, bad game. Don't get, don't get it. Uh, maybe the second one. Maybe the second one, if you're, like, curious. But, like, no, there's, like, there's a thousand ways to play Tony Hawk games, and this is not one of them. Get- I'm trying to see if the second one. Did any better? Oh, seven by IGN. There you they go. They liked it more. Yeah. So there you go. Play that one if you gotta mm-hmm. play any of them. But don't play any of them. Yeah. How about that? Play it. Play an actual console Tony Hawk game. Yeah. Uh, guys, thanks for watching the backlog. We'll see you on the podcast. And if you're here for the podcast, stay. Yes. But if you're here on YouTube, goodbye. Bye. Uh, next we're plowing. Uh, oh, we, Ubisoft. We got Ubisoft. Do fucking all Ubisoft. Dumbass thing. Um, all right, real quick, we got Star Wars Outlaws gameplay. I have to see this gameplay. I'll watch it later. Yeah, uh, I mean, I've heard good things. Yeah, it looks good. I mean, it, it's Ubisoft, so it's going to be familiar, but like, I think the Star Wars aesthetic will help a lot. Mm-hmm. Also, too, if you haven't played a Ubisoft game in a while, this might be the one to play because maybe you're not burnt down on Ubisoft yeah. anymore. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I, I feel like if this is just an Assassin's Creed or a Watch Dogs clone. It won't be so bad for me because I haven't played one of those. Games exactly. Really I forgot. But I do want to play the new Assassin's Creed. Yeah. So if I play that and this and they feel the same, I'm going to be mad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like, because the Ubisoft games, is, for a lot of them, it's not that they're bad. It's just that you've played it a thousand times within yeah. the span of like two years. Yeah. So like a nice break could be good for you. Yeah. Uh, so Star Wars Outlaws looks good. Uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows. We got an extended gameplay. Oh, uh, oh you can pet the dog. Yeah. Uh, if that's good. It, the the two playable characters are very different in terms of how they fight. So that's cool. Yeah, he's like a brute, and she's yeah. like not a brute. Yeah. So that's good. Uh, we got a lot of Prince of Persia updates. Uh, Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown is getting story DLC and free content, like uh, revised bosses, puzzle challenges, uh, outfits, and shit. Still haven't beaten this game. Yeah. Uh, Mask of Darkness is the story DLC coming in September. Uh, the Rogue Prince of Persia is getting an update and it's called the temple of fire It's going to bring tougher challenges to the game and uh they announced a release window for the sands of time remake that'll be 2026 oh this game looks cool yeah the the roguelike one it it kind of looks you've seen the original prince of persia right the way the animations are yeah yeah. like rotoscope this kind of looks like that i mean prince of persia like that's the whole thing it was famous for its animation so it's good that like they're paying homage to that Mm -hmm. So, uh, the Sands of Time remake, uh, I, this sucks. Like, they just <laughs> announced, like, in two years, you uh, you can play the game. This game has been in development hell for well, so long. They had like, to say something. They had to say something. At this point, show us something. Yeah. The first trailer you put out was looked bad. Like, it looked <laughs> terrible. So, you got to give us something more than a candle. <laughs> uh, X Defiant, uh, it's getting a fir- its first season. Cool. Uh, 
Anno uh, 117 Pax Romana. I didn't know that that was a series. I don't know what this is. It's uh, this is a live action trailer. Yeah, it's a yes, it's a live action trailer. They didn't show any gameplay footage of it, but it's apparently it's um it's the next entry in Ubisoft and Blue Byte's 25 year old uh, economic sim real time strategy game. Economic sim sounds real fun, and that's uh, the last thing they have. Yeah, I mean. It kind of sucks because, like, they also said Civilization Seven's coming out, so why would you want to play this and not Civ Seven? Yeah. All right, so not the best from Ubisoft forward. I mean, we I mean, already knew about Assassin's Creed. We already knew about uh, Star Wars. Star Wars. Yeah. I'm glad to see more Star Wars. I'll yeah. watch that trailer later, but otherwise, fine. Well, I don't think we needed a whole thing. Yeah. Like this. Uh, they, we should normalize just not having a whole ass event. Yeah. If you've got nothing to show. Just don't even. Yeah. Uh, all right, next news. Well, before we get into next news, let's say thank you to Satch Mogua. Thank you for the Prime. Uh, Drac, thanks for the 24 months. Rock and Foul, thanks for the 47 months. Hello, friends and chat. Hello. Blackbird, thanks for 27 months. X Gamer, thanks for the eight months. Still playing Dead Island 2, just jumped on to sub. Thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, and that's it. And Anthony Miele with 100 bits. You know, this reminds me of when my father left me as a young lad. Fuck you. Um... <laughs> All right, next news, PlayStation VR 2. Uh, can access games on PC with an yes. adapter? Uh, they, they revealed the PlayStation VR 2 a PC adapter. It will be 60 US dollars available at select retailers and PlayStationDirect.com. Uh, players will also, uh, it's not just a direct connection. Players will also need a commercially available DisplayPort cable that is compatible with DisplayPort 1.4 as well as a Steam account and a PC that meets the minimum requirements listed below. So this is basically gonna let you um, use the PlayStation VR headset, not just for PlayStation games, also uh, Steam VR games. I'm um, interested in this. I really don't understand why it needs an adapter, because it I, is just USB-C. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand either. I, don't also, I also don't understand why it's DisplayPort only, because like if you have a monitor that's HDMI, that could be a problem. <laughs> It, it could be a resolution thing. Oh, no, no. resolution should be fine. Yeah. It's the only thing I could see is that they're like, well, most people are going to have USB and not USB C, so we'll just give them an adapter. But requiring it is weird. Yeah. It really doesn't make any sense to me. You should just, well, video maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I feel like. No, I mean, every, pretty much every computer can do video over. Well, for games, maybe it's a little different. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like this wasn't a hundred percent necessary. I feel like maybe it's like, hey, if you want the highest quality, uh, if you want the highest resolution and highest frame rate, here's an adapter. That way you can do your display port. Uh, but if you just want something easy, you can plug it in USB C. Maybe I mean, or maybe this is just a very expensive way to get people to do it because they don't want you to play PSVR two on PC. They want you to play it on PlayStation Five. Because if you plug in a monitor to your USB C in your computer, you're not getting your graphics card. You're not running it through the graphics right, card. Yeah. So like that makes sense why you would want to have something going yeah. through. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's the reason. Yeah. Uh, this made me laugh. Setup is easy. Simply connect the PSVR 2 to your PC using the PSVR 2 PC adapter and the DisplayPort 1.4 cable. Then download the PSVR 2 app and the Steam VR app from Steam. This will allow you to set up your PSVR 2 on your PC, customize your settings and play area, and start purchasing and playing games in Steam VR. That's not that easy. That seems like a lot of steps. Yeah. It's just like plug the thing into the thing and then the thing to the thing. Yeah. And then download these two things. So having to plug in a whole ass display port cable is going to make me never want to use this. Yeah. If it was as easy as just plugging the headset into the computer, then I'm down. But yeah. having to use a whole other, having to unplug my monitor and plug it into this thing is yeah. just never going to fucking happen. Um, aside from that, I think you do lose some stuff. Like I think the foveated rendering, the, you know, like the eye tracking rendering thing, I think you lose that. Yeah. And some other weird shit. Um, uh, oh, here it is. Uh, you'll notice some key features like HDR headset feedback, eye tracking, adaptive triggers, and haptic feedback other than rumble are not available when playing on PC. Not much reason for that. Yeah. I mean, certain things I understand, but like eye tracking? 
you're making us use a whole ass app anyway. Yeah. So whatever. I'm glad that they're allowing these things to be used outside of PlayStation because mm-hmm. uh it's a it's a pretty decent headset for the price. Uh and it's made better if you don't have to use a PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, mine's been sitting on the shelf, so maybe <laughs> I'll get this and give it a try. Maybe yeah. I'll play Half-Life Alex with. It. Uh next. Oh wait, when can I get that? Oh, uh f- Soon ish, I think. June August 12th. 7th. Oh. <laughs> I think that's when it goes on. Uh, August 7th is when it goes on sale. Oh, there's a bundle. Yeah. With Horizon Call of the Mountain. Oh, you can get that until. You save $100 until June 12th. Okay. You said August what now? 7th. Okay. So I'll hold that for August 7th. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next, we got Last of Us PC complete. Uh, yeah, Last of Us two uh two PC port is apparently complete, but not oh. released. Uh, according to leaker Bill Bill Coon, uh, he claims that the development of Last of Us uh, Part Two started way back in 2021 and was concluded uh sometime last year. The leaker noted that the remastered version of the game was released on PS5 in January of this year, which perhaps means that Sony is deliberately holding back the PC port. Uh, Bilbo Kuhn uh, then speculates that it may release with season two of the HBO show set to come out next year. Okay. So, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. I mean, I think people liked the last PC port, right? It was buggy. I remember. And I don't think it worked on steam deck. Oh, so, well, okay. Yeah. Uh, next big controversy from Sony. Uh, they removed 8K from the box. Yeah, this uh, PlayStation 5 box used to say 8K. They had the 8K logo on it, and now it doesn't anymore. Uh, so I got a collector's item now. So I decided to look into it. Yeah. And there is a grand total of one game that supports 8K on the PlayStation 5, mm-hmm. and it is The Taurus. And that, some people responded to me and said that it isn't even 8K. It is is upscaled to 8k okay. or something like yeah. it, it renders internally yeah, 4k I, and then upscales or something yeah, but it's just why are they removing it like that's the question like are they no longer supporting 8k um are they just gonna as this feature gonna be available to anybody anymore are they gonna remove it entirely i mean it was the bullet point on the box for yeah. the new consoles. Like every new console had, or every just HDMI device has the resolution on it. Yeah. And the last generation said 4K. Even though it wasn't. So this one needed to have a bigger number. Right. Uh, uh, I think they realized that nobody gave a shit about the bigger number yeah. and that uh, nobody has 8K TVs. So people yeah. see that and they go, oh, I don't care. Uh, this article is speculating that maybe they're saving 8K support for the PlayStation 5 Pro that's rumored to be coming out this year. That would suck if they originally offered 8K support for base model PS- PS5s and said, no, now you have to spend an extra $300 in order to use it. Just it just doesn't make sense. We already talked about on this channel how uh, a lot of people still have still play their games on a 1080p display. Yeah. So... There's just no reason. Not I'd be shocked if anybody listening to this has an 8K display at yeah. all. Uh, and if you do, play the Taurus and let me know how it is because I yeah. can't imagine it like blowing your mind. <laughs> you know, it, like I don't mind them taking 8K off the box. I think it shouldn't have been there to begin with. Yeah. Maybe have 4K and then say supports up to 8K, you know, something like that. But yeah. like for the most part, you're playing your games in fucking 4K, maybe even less than that. Uh, all right. Next, we got Google did the leaks. Uh, according fault. to an article from 404 Media, Nintendo was previously impacted by leaked information obtained by a Google employee who accessed the private YouTube videos. Google held an internal review and deemed that the activity was not intentional. Yeah, okay. 404 Media mm-hmm. says that the article is based on a copy of an internal database uh, which tracks Google's six years worth of potential pi- privacy and security issues. Thousands of incidents were actually reported by the company's employees. The database covers a ton of other incidents as well, ranging from accidentally collecting children's voice data to Google Street View, transcribing and storing license plate numbers from photos. As far as the Nintendo leak is concerned, it is unclear which announcements were impacted. The database report uh, is based on an incident that took place between 2013 and 2018. Uh, they were also under fire for being the reason that the Grand Theft Auto trailer leaked. 
somebody found yes. uh, somebody at Google like uh found like the rock star YouTube account yeah. and like watched the video or something. So So there you go. We've come a long way from don't be evil. <laughs> uh mod retro chromatic Game Boy. I bought yeah. one. You did. I did. Okay. From Palmer Lucky. Yes, the guy who created the Oculus Rift. And he's a weirdo. Yes. I need to look into why he's a weirdo, but I remember him being a weirdo. Uh, he was, f I remember he was fired from Meta because Meta bought Oculus and he was fired. From he turned it into a woke thing. Yeah, he, he became like a uh, like a far right guy. He claimed like he was fired because of his political. Yeah. Like ideologies or something. Yeah. And then they were like, no, you're just weird. And we didn't want to work with you. <laughs> Anyway, that guy is making an FPGA uh, Game Boy that plays uh, actual cartridges. Yes. Uh, it will have link cable support as well as a headphone jack and USB-C for lagless video output. Um, it will last 24 hours on three standard AA batteries. Uh, that's Take cool. Double A's? Yeah. Put a rechargeable battery in this thing, dude. <laughs> uh. Two hundred dollars, and then you got fucking put double A's in there it. There will be an option for a lithium ion pack too, and uh, Lucky has uh, told the Verge that you can recharge your, you can charge of NIMH double A batteries over USB C. Oh, so I could just get those batteries. Yeah. Okay. Still an upgrade from a. It's already two hundred dollars. Yeah. Uh, I got this color, the blue. I think. Yeah. Um, there is an option to have Japanese writing on it, but the Japanese writing is only for the B, A, select, and start buttons, and that's right. just weird yeah. because the Game Boy didn't have that. Mm -hmm. So I just went with the English. Yeah. Uh, Another weird thing is that the screen is uh, 160 by 144. It's like exactly yeah. the resolution of a Game Boy. Uh, compared to like... The Japanese writing. Uh, the, the most obvious one-to-one -one comparison to this is the analog pocket, and that's like got like a... 1080p screen well, or no, a 4k it, screen or what well it's 10 times yeah 40 uh 144 by 160 so yeah. it's literally 10 times the resolution yes. of this. but should that really matter or the pixels are, are as well, big as they're gonna to be lucky it does because uh he said we're actually authentic the color temps with well, this isn't comparing it to the analog pocket he said we're actually authentic the color temps are exactly right the clock rate isn't slightly off the pixel structure isn't totally wrong in a way that ruins sub pixel aware sprites etc and there's, there's a picture of it that illustrates the his point i don't think any of that is a problem with the analog. none of that fucking matters <laughs> So the clock speed is an issue with the FPGA, uh, uh, the funny playing FPGA. The clock yeah. speed is weird. So maybe he's referring to that. But the analog pocket, I don't think has any of those issues. Maybe if you're a psychopath, the the sub pixel uh, breakout could be weird. But I don't yeah. think so. Oh, there it is. There's the picture you were talking about. Yeah. But there's no comparison. Well, no, there is. It's um. Are you on the verge? Oh, this is this must be the subpixel. Yeah. Are you on the verge article? I'm on the yeah the verge. Article. Yeah. Uh, so if you scroll down a little bit, keep going. That one. That's an analog pocket compared to the. Oh, the it's retro. warm. Yeah. Okay, it's a little warm. Yeah. So what, bro? <laughs> yeah, I don't think the subpixel layout is a problem. Yeah. For most people, it's not. He seems to be an insane person who has been modding Game Boys his entire life. Like something like that would obviously be like very important to him. I don't think it is. I think that he <laughs> just thinks he can make a couple bucks. Yeah, I'm probably. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna get it and I'll see and I'll compare it to an analog pocket and the F funny playing FPGA. Two hundred dollars is a lot, especially because yeah. an analog pocket is the same and that has a micro SD card slot on the site. Put whatever you want on it, yeah. and I, I'd imagine. I can't imagine the screen. And what's weird is like it's that. it's two hundred dollars, and he says I don't see this as a way to make money. I see this as a way to make the world's best tribute to the Game Boy, something that I'll be proud of for a long time. So like this just seems to be like a passion project for him. It doesn't seem to be like a business venture. I mean, I'm sure he's got money. He doesn't need to yeah. start yeah, yeah. business ventures. Um. Anyway, Suicide Squad kills the Justice League. Lost Warner Brothers two hundred million dollars. Yes. Uh. Who would have thought the game looks like crap? Nobody wanted uh, lost a staggering two hundred million dollars in a new report from Bloomberg uh, that 
uh, goes into like the development of the game. Uh, for context, the Suicide Squad movie, the bad one, cost $175 million to make, and that is before you factor in the various advertising costs. Despite uh, being a critical failure by most metrics, it went on to make over $725 million worldwide. Uh, so yeah, even though it, uh, even though Suicide Squad, like, is popular, this game clearly was not. <laughs> yeah. Well, I that's they're gonna learn the long the wrong lesson from it. Yeah. They're gonna which is they're gonna learn they're gonna be like, oh, we can't branch out and make different types of games. No, but the the weird the weirdest shit is they are already learning the wrong lessons of this like game because right when the game came out. Uh, David Zaslav, world's most punchable man, said that like they were going to double down on live service games. Like that's the future. Her uh, Hogwarts Legacy, a single player solo experience, was the best selling game of last year. That's not the future. The future is shit like Suicide Squad. And then the de that same day, it was uh, terrible reviews, bad sales numbers, and now this stuff. And they're still doubling down on games and service over at Warner Brothers. So like. I don't know what lesson they learned from Suicide Squad, but it's all the wrong ones, clearly. Uh, this is pulled from a Bloomberg article that Jason Schreier put together about the development of Suicide Squad. It's very interesting. If you have the time, go and check it out. Uh, it basically sounds like there's just a lot of like confusion as to what this game was going to be. Yeah. Apparently never a Superman game, though. Last thing, GOG to delete cloud saves over 200 megabytes in September. A uh, recent reveal in a GOG post, the platform made clear that any cloud save files that exceeded the default allocation limit of 200 megabits per game will be deleted after August 31st. Please review them to avoid the loss of files stored within your uh, cloud saves available uh, via GOG Galaxy. Uh, save uh, saves stored locally on your computer will not be affected. Um, 200 megabytes is huge for a save file. Yes. I'd imagine that there's not many games that have save files that big. But even still, like that's that sucks. Like cloud saving, cloud saving is becoming like more important than ever. And yeah. like you know, Steam does it the best. Microsoft's is also very good. Um, Sony is okay, but you have to pay for it. It's part of PlayStation Plus. Yeah. I don't have PlayStation Plus anymore, so all my saves are gone, uh, or they're on my PS4. I can't just access them on my PS5. Um, and Nintendo's is just not, might as well not have it. <laughs> Yeah, Nintendo's is pretty bad. Yeah. I'm trying to see. Yeah, I was trying to see if there's like a list of PC games that have really big save files, and I can't really. <sighs> well, I, I mean, back in the day, like save files used to be like, for some games, they, they used to be like different. Like for Tony Hawk, uh, the main campaign was a save file, and then your creative character was another save file, and then a creative park was another save yeah. file. And then if. I wanted to play, then that's another save file for my character, and another save file for my campaign, and another save file for But my... they're, like, relatively small. It's, like, where you are in the game and, yeah. like, all of your stats and stuff. And, like, yeah. that's usually just, like, just data. Like, it's, yeah. it's, not, it's never anything, like, huge. So, I, I, it's interesting. I know Skyrim used to balloon its size. I, 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 don't, I have no idea. So, if you have GOG... GOG and you have save files there in their cloud save. Uh, check them and make yeah. sure none of them are too big, because you're gonna lose them in September. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you can store them locally. I'd imagine. I'd imagine not a lot of people are using GOG for their save files. Well, the thing about GOG is like you go to their website and it, like you just download the game. It's DRM free, mm -hmm. so I imagine most people are just doing that. They do offer like a GOG Galaxy, which is like their version of Steam. Mm -hmm. So it's like one like central launcher that launches all your games for. But I don't know how many people use that. They would just rather use the regular old way. Mm -hmm. All right. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. I think maybe those speakers are off. <laughs> it could be it. This is from Gwits of the Stars or something. It says bet at Jeff Keighley, and it's a picture of him at the Game Awards holding up a printed out tweet of Jeff Keighley tweeting at him saying, maybe you should watch before you tweet. Got him, sucker. So it's him proving that he is watching before yeah. he then tweets. This was at the YouTube theater? That's what it looks like it says. Okay. Cool, man. Uh, hey, now we're going to talk to you guys real quick. Yes. Let's start with people who left comments over on last week's Wolfden Podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Podcast. 
Uh, we kind of missed last week's stuff. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't think he... I think Fred got the gist. No, he didn't. He put last... We're just going to do last week. Uh, he took screenshots for some reason. Did it off my phone, so screenshots was easier. Okay. Uh, Landrangel says, Vote with your wallet is right. Hubby and I spent a lot of money on The Sims 3, but I have spent a very low amount on The Sims 4. I did buy the base game before it was made free to play, and I'm positive I got it on discount. But every DLC I've gotten for it has been a on giveaway because I just didn't enjoy the base game enough to spend any additional money on it. So this person is voting with their wallet specifically for The Sims 4. Hey man, The Sims 4, they all got a big player base. There's a lot of shit in The Sims yeah. 4. It, you, I, I was setting Hannah up with The Sims 4. Yeah. There is fucking so much shit you gotta do yeah. to get The Sims 4 working. And there's a million DLCs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Melon says, played Halo Master Chief Collection with a friend for the first time last week. Uh... After I don't know how many years, you gotta log into a Microsoft account or something to play, and it's a huge pain in the ass. Less of the less of that crap, the better. I don't want to log into Steam, boot a game, wait through a bunch of company splash screens, then log into more shit. There comes a point where annoying shit like that builds enough that I'm just not gonna even bother with a game I know will have it. So yeah, sort of similarly, uh, if a game needs to like download an update or install some weird bullshit or up or something like that, uh, sometimes I will install the update and then go to sleep. Like I yeah. oftentimes will just, it'll convince me not to play the game. Yeah. That happens to me very frequently. Or if there's a launcher that yeah. gives me any sort of resistance, I'm out. Even on console. Like if I boot up, if I boot up my PlayStation and I see like the game I want to play has a two hour download, I'll just turn my PlayStation right yeah, off. It, like it, it sucks. It is a barrier to yeah. entry that they need to uh, try to minimize. It's a friction point. Yeah. Uh, there was something else that also deters me from playing games. Oh, well. Uh, Caleb Fox says, Will, have you had a chance to play Marvel's Midnight Suns yet? Saw it's free on Epic, and so I claimed it, but I'm sure if I'm unsure if it's any good. Uh, I've heard it's excellent. I haven't played it because it's like it's like an XCOM type game, so and I'm like not really into that sort of stuff. Um, but like maybe that was one of the games that said the cleared section of Target, so maybe I'll oh. go back and, and pick that up. So we'll How see. Much? It, was, it was like $11, I think. So Jesus, not, Christ. not too bad. Like right within the window. Uh, Swal something says Cyberpunk 2077 is a really great game. I've spent, I played it before and after the 2.0 update, but did wait for lots of bug fixes. I totally understand why its reputation is what it is, but ultimately it's really a bummer. It was so rushed to release by the collars because it tainted the legacy of what, in my opinion, would have otherwise been an all time great game. Yeah, I mean, I guess we'll really like have to see down the road how people really think about cyberpunk. I, know? I mean, when I played it, I was like, I, I could see through the bugs, and I did not see something I would have enjoyed. See, I'm I'm the opposite. Like, I saw something I could definitely enjoy, but couldn't because of the bugs. So I would love to like boot it up and play again, especially now with the 2.0 update. Luabix says, I'm once again here to spread the good word that Shadow the Hedgehog was a fantastic game. I haven't seen a lot. Ever since the Sonic and Shadow trailer, like, I haven't seen a lot of revisionist history that's not about Shadow the Hedgehog. <laughs> like, and they helped, like, it wasn't a bad game. It was. There is it was, no chance. Like, it was the first time I realized that Sonic the Hedgehog could be bad. <laughs> <laughs> and I, like, put up with a lot How of How could it be bad? You take Sonic... And you make him badass, and you give him a gun. Yeah. How can it be bad? Oh, they found a way. I still want to play Sonic 06. And it's, it's, they make it really difficult for you to do that. I will just give you the disc, and you can hook up the 360. You have to hook up the 360 yeah. is the problem. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Uh, we're in the chat real quick. Uh, yes. On YouTube, Artemi? Says the Taurus is rendered at 8K, but it's downscaled to 4K by the PS5 because it is software locked from pushing 8K resolution. 
Oh. That is really stupid and interesting. Uh, they also said that Digital Foundry explained the PS5 AK issue pretty well in their recent show. Basically, the console doesn't physically have the bandwidth to push AK resolution at a reasonable frame rate. So I heard that, and I'm interested in that because that doesn't make sense because the HDMI can do it. What, okay. Where's the bottleneck? I mean, the bottleneck's probably on the software side, man. It doesn't have the capability to do it at 60 frames per second. It has the capability to do it at 30, unless mm -hmm. there's a bottleneck somewhere that I'm not right. familiar with. Because I think the tourist says that it, I think the article that I had said that the tourist was 8K60, which doesn't make sense because yeah. it, it should be bottlenecked at 30. Yeah. Um, unless there's somewhere else in the chain, something else in the chain that, yeah. that is bottlenecked. I don't know. Uh, Bob, the game you were thinking of earlier was Solar Ash. Solar Ash was the uh, game by Heart Machine that I thought was a sequel to uh, Hyper Light Drifter. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. It is this game. Solar Ash. This, this character looked like they were in Hyper Light Breaker. Oh, okay. Yeah, that does look like... Mm-hmm. The HDMI bandwidth can't do 8K60, only 8K30. Yes, that's what I'm referring to. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the other bottleneck is keeping it from doing 8K. Will, yes, you can access PS4 saves on PS5 without plus. It's in the settings. You can either transfer using an Ethernet cable or Wi-Fi. The two consoles communicate to each other. Is the that's PS4... not cloud save. Yeah, does the PS4 have to be on? Because I did that during my initial setup of the PS5. Yeah, I've done that. Like, that's not... I'm talking about, like, if I turn on my PS5... Because my PS4 is in storage right now. If I turn on my PS5, my, I can just go to a menu option. My cloud save is there. This sounds like the PS4 needs to be on, and it will beam the save to my PS5. In that case, I'll just boot up my PS4 and put it on a thumb drive. Um, Bob, have you gotten your dumper yet? If not, any word on when you'll get it. I have not heard a goddamn thing from these people. I don't have it. I have no idea what's happening. Hmm. Thoughts on Vimslayer having to take down every Nintendo game. Yet, I'm not surprised. Yeah. It was only a matter of time until uh, our ROM site got taken down for having ROMs. Yeah. We need to start normalizing fucking getting your games legally. We're yeah. got, we're it's, we're I don't want to be the dad here, but we're <laughs> we're going to ruin it for everybody if we're openly downloading yeah, copyrighted material. I mean I'll It be... sucks, it's difficult and there's a there's a, a a pretty heavy learning curve to getting your ROMs legally, but it's necessary for uh, for, for this hobby to exist at all i'll be the cool slacker uncle and say if you know how to get movies or music or tv shows in a less than legal way that might be the way to go for your roms like don't go to the like the big That's flashy vim's layer. vim's layer was is that okay did you not know what vim's layer is i thought it was just a regular website because a lot of it's a rom site, site. Yeah. It's a ROM site. But that's the thing. Because, like, you just... if a, if It's a site, the one everybody used because it didn't have ads and stuff. Right. Was, but if you go to, like, a site that specializes in it, like, it, like you run the risk of it getting shut down. Whereas, if, like, if you go to, like, a more general, like, torrent site... Oh, uh, Yeah, what that's what I'm getting at. Okay. Hypothetically, of course. I'm not advocating for anything. And if you were to do that, yeah. you'd probably want to use a VPN. Yeah. But no, I'm saying, man, fucking if you have a hacked console of any kind, just fucking d get your games. Yeah. Just get them. It's easy. Mm -hmm. do, if, 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 just do that, please. And then you can, it's still illegal to trade them with your friends, but it's way less le uh, illegal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you touch on Nintendo issuing dmca to game banana no we probably should have uh mm. that is also scary because game banana is a uh a, a mod site yes it's not even uh a rom site it's, yeah. it's, it's, for, it's for mods and that's 
disappointing. I am so there there is still some concerning language in the D Digital Millennium Copyright Act about how they don't want you to modify your your <clears throat> consoles yeah. to circumvent copyright protection. Mm -hmm. Um there's a lot of provisions for uh getting around those those circumventions uh there i don't think there is what it like kind of con the digital millennium copyright act kind of contradicts itself because it says that you're allowed to uh back up your software yeah even games and stuff but there's other language that's like uh if you're circumventing uh drm mm -hmm. then it might not be legal right so Every three years, they put amendments on the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, and I would like to see how we, what's the best option for proposing something, and what would be the best language <coughs> to put game modifications in the Digital Millennium Copyright yeah. Act? Because look, downloading ROMs off of Vim's Lair is never going to be legal, mm -hmm. and I don't think it should be, because that's going to open up a whole can right. of worms. But you absolutely need to be able to get your ROMs off of... A, if you own a game, yeah. you need to be able to get that game off of the console it's intended for and put it somewhere else for a backup. Because eventually it's not going to work on mm -hmm. that console anymore. So uh, that sort of language needs to be addressed in the Digital Millennium mm -hmm. Copyright Act, and I don't know the best way. I'm, I'm trying to look into it. DMCA laws are highly gray area and out of date for modern tech. There have been a lot of amendments to it. And there, I was looking into the rec the most recent ones and they are trying to, to help stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of really interesting amendments that are actually, uh, uh, that, that favor consumers. Right. Uh, just nothing specifically about game modifications and, yeah. uh, and backing up games. So. While I've just heard from this, I've just heard this from the dude who runs the video game history foundation and ROM sites that use Nintendo IP in the logos are more likely to get shut. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you can't make money off of Nintendo's IP. Yeah. You can't, you can't do that. Uh, Bob and Will, Among Us update set for June 18th and was accidentally posted and then taken down. Okay. Uh, no, uh, because that, um, let's believe that because that's going to be when the direct is. Uh, yeah. Shadow dropped? When is the 18th? That's next week, Next right? week, yeah. Okay. Cool. I would imagine next week. Yeah. Next week or the week after Nintendo Direct. That sounds about right. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, Mr. Yorch says, holy shit, you guys are still alive? Nope. Thanks nope. for hanging out, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash Wolf Den or youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den Podcast. So you can go check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch it, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every podcast service such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube Podcasts, Audible.com. But no matter where you get the show from, folks, please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms over here on twitch we're going to be raiding uh little curbs he's a mario maker 2 streamer he is streaming a really hard level right now uh i will see you guys definitely on thursday i am working on a video about the ein odin 2 mini it's kind of fucking awesome oh yeah it's like a it's like a modern vita mm -hmm. it's sick uh it is just a lot of money so that it makes it kind of an unreasonable purchase, but right. it's cool. And you'll see that on Thursday as well. Also, I've decided to shoot this whole video in HDR. Ooh, it's going to be a huge pain in the Will ass. That even upload to YouTube. Yeah. I already did a sample. Oh, wow. It's happening. Oh boy. Uh, it's very bright. <laughs> uh, I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. Bye.